this is this is what this is when you, you nailed it. This is what you needed. This is what the tones of all the movies should be. Is you need to have a character like Samuel Jackson literally s- trying to stare down or stare up at a kaiju. That's what you need. And he's like, I eat, and that's and in this moment, Samuel Jackson traded in the Viet Cong for King Kong. He's like, whatever I do in this movie, I'm gonna kill that monkey. <laughs> I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> And eventually, Khan, he just destroys everything. He's like, well, I'm done. Hello, I just wanted to thank you for clicking on my video, and I wanted to let you know, not only do I create content in my YouTube channel here, Class in the Glass, but I'm also on Twitch, where I play single-player games, multiplayer games, I do movie reviews, cartoon reviews, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Also, it would be a big help if you can check out my Patreon, where you can gain access to uh, audio commentaries, reactions, and the ability to submit questions for my podcasts and videocasts. And all that content can be found in the links below. In the meantime, enjoy the video. But we gotta get down to the nitty gritty details chat of Con Skull Island in this review chat. So typically, as you guys know, I like to ask you a very important question, okay? That question being, how many of you have seen Con colon Skull Island chat? Very curious. Very curious about this. Chris Ayers, so many times. M. Xavier, Con all the way. Ace Rock, me. Can't say I haven't. Ask mode in the theater. Good to see Ask mode. Hope you're doing well. BBGD, I'm still going to the theater. I'm just wearing a mask. I don't care. Fair enough. Uh, Ace Rock, I fucking love this movie. And anyway, I watched it once. CDR Spock, me. All right, so I saw it opening day. But your graphics never seen it. Just that is a dumb question, Chris. Of course we all seen it. I don't know. Some people haven't seen it. I love this movie. Says KD, what happened? Loki is badass. Fair enough. I love Murder. I have not seen it, but I have seen the 2005 movie. Oofa. That's a long fucking film. Sissy Man have not. More Buffner and I have. First time about a month ago. Is Colin a monkey? Technically not. He's an ape. I like to call him. He monkey. I like to call him monkey check because it makes me laugh and giggle. Well, Buffner really, really enjoyed it. Uh, Luke the Boss, I have seen it. Sissy Man, I kind of want to. Maybe GG watched a few weeks ago. Finally. Qui. How similar is it to Peter Jackson's con? Oh, no, no, no. They have very little similarities. They have locations. The only thing that, that I would say is similar between the two is they both have con. And they both take place in Skull Island. That's about it. Now, outside of that, very different films. Um, this is for those people who are unfamiliar. Oh, witness! Witness me! It's Mara Gaming. Thank you so much for the raid, my friend. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Hope you're doing very well. Good to see you. Hope you have a nice stream. What were you playing? What were you doing? Chat, please check out Xvara Gaming's channel. Lend this man some support. In case you got we need to save Mother. Why do you know that name? <laughs> Skull was just Australia. That would be hilarious if it was just Australia. I'd buy it. <laughs> I'd fucking buy that. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> Borderlands still playing that Borderlands 3. Nice. Christ. Nice. Nice. Glad you've been enjoying that. A lot of, yeah, a lot of DLC content in that game, too. Robust title. Robust title for Florida. Yeah, he's fought giant lizards all the time. Skull crawlers, as they're called by John C. Rowley for no apparent reason. Um... But, uh, yeah, I, Chad, I've, uh, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of this movie. You know, after Godzilla 2014, which I reviewed yesterday, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that film. I think it's quite boring. I think it misses the point of a monster movie, Chad. Like, why do you have a monster movie and want to hide the monster? Con Skull Island does the opposite of that. It's like, you want monster? You want monkey? We give you monkey in the first opening, like, two minutes. Monkey. It's like, holy shit. There are so many well choreographed monster battles in this in this movie. There are so many cool like it's not just Khan. It's not just Khan stomping around. It's all sorts of monsters and creatures that you see, chat. I mean, you you, you see these giant lizard uh uh you know reptile uh, like creatures, chat called skull crawlers that Khan fights throughout the entire film. You see giant fucking spiders, chat that you know that go right through the mouth and asshole of people. You got giant water buffalo walk around, chat. You got little pterodactyls that are ripping people apart. It's like, this is what I want in a kaiju monster which you have people getting eaten and fucked up and monsters fighting each other. That's what you need. That's what you need in this film. And so it felt like, I don't know, it's like the director, Jordan Vogt Roberts, I'm saying his name right, Jordan Vogt Roberts, who's, this is the only thing he's done uh, since then. Uh, he's working on a Metal Gear Solid movie, apparently, chat. I don't know what the status of that is right now. But I felt like he looked at Godzilla versus, or God, not Godzilla versus, but uh, Godzilla 2014 says, I want there to actually be a monster in my movie and to have to, you know, be, be like entertaining. 
And he's like, okay, I'm going to have that. And he did, he went the extra mile. I was like, listen, does Skull Island have like, you know, oh, uh, these characters who have so, so much depth, so much characterization? No. But are some of them fun? Absolutely. Like Samuel Jackson, uh, John C. Riley, John Goodman, they're just fun to watch on screen and how they're bouncing off each other. Even other actors who I think are just doing, they're doing fine. Like Tom Hiddleston, he's very much playing the, you know, the Captain Jack character from the original King Kong. You know, he's the guy who's like, I'm here to save the day. I'm here to be fucking handsome. Brie Larson is this photojournalist. I, but they're both doing well with what they're given. They're attaining. I'm like, I'm not like dismissing like, oh, you're fucking boring. It's like, no. Like, they're in a horrible fucking situation. They're trying to escape from all these fucking things all the time. And it's not just I'm just sitting there and, you know, I have one of the characters like, I just really want to go back to my family. I just, you know, I just want to go to talk to Elizabeth Olsen and my kid that was in one scene. It's like, nothing's like that, chat. You have a character like that in John C. Riley, but he is just having so much fun as this guy who's been on Scotland for 30 goddamn years. And he has that scene, but you buy it because you like him. And it's like, it's in context, you're like, oh my God, he hasn't seen his family in 30 fucking years. Like, there's something cool about that. And th that's why I appreciate the movie. So he went the extra mile, at least giving us, it gives us entertaining characters. And even if you have, like, some random guy, like, you have, like, a, like John Ortiz is in this movie. It's like, he's not, he doesn't have a lot of depth at all, but he gets some fun scenes and he gets fucked up in the film. It's like, oh, that was memorable. I like that. And that's what this movie has over something like the Godzilla films that we've gotten. In this monsterverse chat, like I, I honestly, you, you, your architect or the guy who should have been in charge of all these monster movies to me feels like it should have been Jordan Vote Roberts. I was like, that was a big loss for Warner Brothers not to have him on more of these films to feel his influence through all these movies. That's what they needed, chat. Uh, I think aesthetically, the movie's really cool. It's set during the 70s. I mean, it's it's aping every Vietnam movie you saw. There's no question about that. It's lifting and stealing entire scenes and sequences. Like, it's doing that, but it's like it's acknowledging it. It's not pretending like, no, this is original. No, it's just, it's just having fun with it chat it's literally apocalypse now with monkey with giant monkey and giant reptiles and giant insects that literally pierce you through your mouth and butthole that's what it does and i was like more power to you for that all right uh and you know I, i'm hoping I'm, I'm hoping uh you know uh, chat that we're gonna eventually that some of this fun because the movie's just fun it's, it's a fun watch and it's short it's just under two hours like an hour and 58 minutes or something just under two hours chat and you don't feel that, you don't even feel that length at all. It's like, oh, shit, the movie's almost done. Okay, sure. Uh, I'm hoping that some of that fun carries over to Godzilla vs. Khan. I, you know, I mean, I, I like, uh, I like uh, the, the, the director of that, of, of that movie chat. Name escapes me at the top of my head. But, of course, you know, he, he, did, the, he did The Guest. He did um, uh, The Blair Witch. He did um, uh, You're Next. He did a, lot of, did a lot of very good movies. So I'm hoping for the best with, with that film. Um, but... Yeah, I'm just, I'm just making, watching this movie, watching movies just makes me go, shit, why didn't you get this guy to do all these Monsterverse films? I think he could have had a lot of fun with all these characters. And I still think that these films should have been period pieces. There's something about that 70s aesthetic that is just so fun to me. I just like the way, even, even, even the simple things, like even as these title cards that pop up and it's all, it's, everything's very colorful. I love the set designs. Like, you remember any of the sets? I only remember one set. I was talking about this during my commentary chat uh, for Godzilla 2014. The only set or environment I remembered was the, when they went back to that section of Japan, that little city that was like, no one's uh, occupied in nearly 20, God, like, you know, 15 years, nearly 20 years. And the, the, like the, the floral and fauna have taken over. Chad, you see all these skyscrapers covered in vegetation and stuff. It felt very post-apocalyptic, something like out of The Walking Dead or The Last of Us or something. Like this film has so many fun sets and environments to just look at and explore. And there's just little references and things that characters just throw out there. It's like, man, this, the movie has what I think the Godzilla films, particularly the first one, lack is a sense of personality, a sense of like what we are. And, it, and it's like some I, I get some people don't like this movie because it's like I just didn't care for it because of the characters or whatever. Uh, it's fair enough, but it 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 it, ha it 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 knows what it wants to be and it runs with it, and that's what I appreciate about it, Chad. It, it it's fun and it's it's funny too. I mean, you literally have a character who is just you know staring at it, it's like is that a big monkey and that's it. <laughs> it's perfect. That's what I love. That's what I love about it. Um. And I, I'm, I'm just hoping that it's, this is going to carry over to Godzilla vs. Kong. Because if it's like those other two Godzilla movies, I'm going to be like, eh. 
I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna, I, uh, I have some concerns. Carmi Hazel, welcome to stream. Six months subscribed on a five month streak, three months away from front movement on Twitch, baby. Juicy gang, juicy gang, juicy gang. Half a year has passed by. It's amazing. Wow, woo, wee woo. Carmi Hazel, wow, woo, wee woo. Thank you for all your support. I hope you're doing very, very well today. Just in the beginning of my review for Con Skull Island, just praising this film. Up the wazoo. I'm a big fan of it, of course, Chef. Give you a brief background, as I said before. It has an all-star cast of people. We can debate how if they're if they're used well. Tom Hiddleston, Samuel Jackson, John Goodman, Brie Larson, uh, Toby Kebbell, Chad, who also, funny enough, Toby Kebbell's in this movie. He also does the mocap for uh, for Khan in the film. And I was like, oh, cool. They're, they're going to bring him back for Godzilla vs. Khan, right? He's not, he, he didn't do it, which is too bad. I don't know why, Maybe he was busy. But you might not recognize the name Toby Kebbell, but he has had a history of playing apes in motion capture chat he played koba in dawn of the plan of the apes and in war for the plan of the apes in that in the in the, in the, in the more re, re, recent rebooted apes trilogy and so it's like and he fucking nails it as con he does a really good job he actually shares a scene with himself which i think is kind of funny both as his human character chat you know fucking sergeant you know, toby kebbell and uh con i was like that's pretty good uh, also, John Ortiz, as I said before, Chad, you got Easy the actor who played Easy, and of course, Chad, you know, goddamn John C. Riley right there, John C. Riley himself, who I think is the um, the best actor in in the film. He has the best arc, Chad. He's the best thorough arc. I mean, he even gets the last end note in the movie. Well, not counting the stinger at the end of the film, which sets up another film, but like it's pretty goddamn good. Oh. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> I this. Yay! Also, chat like I said, it was directed by uh, John Vote Roberts. Movie was made for about 185 million dollars. Made a respectable 566.7 million. It was a box office box office success. Uh, reviews m relatively positive reviews. Chat positive to mix. You know, a lot of people you know praised it for its its action and set pieces, and environments and things. But you know, there was a little uh, criticism towards. Um, the characters, you know, who were not like they were still praised for Samuel Jackson and John Goodman and John C. Riley. But outside of the people were like, ah, the other characters are gonna. I think some of the characters were fine. Others don't work. Others, others are just simply there to be fucking cannon fodder and to die in horrible ways. Like people get people die in 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 the worst ways possible in this movie. It's like, oh, like he fell down. It's like, no, he fell down and then he was smushed and then he was eaten and then he was he boiled. He was boiled alive in stomach acid and then the creature regurgitated him. That's that's the deaths you can expect here. <laughs> I was like, I fell asleep during this movie. Oh, no! I hope you don't fall asleep during my review. That's the last thing I, uh, I want. But, chat, you can tell I'm, I'm a big fan of this movie. Also, someone asked before if this has any similarities to Peter Jackson King Kong. Thank God it does not. The only similarities that it has is that it has Kong in it, and it takes place on Skull Island, although it's very much a reimagined um, Skull Island. You know, not not as offensive maybe <laughs> as some of those uh, those original movies, in terms of especially with the natives, they actually very peaceful people. Where uh, Khan is is very kind. I I love this Khan. Like people always said, oh Godzilla, he's like a good kaiju. No, he ain't. Khan's a good kaiju. What I love about this film, like this this is your kaiju who legitimately actually cares about people and wants to. Have, you're not fucking with him. He won't fuck with you. And if he sees something something else fucking with you, he will fight that thing to make sure you're okay. I really like that they really gave a lot of time to personify Khan. Like, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a good guy. It's just like when you're coming here blowing his shit up and tacking his, his b giant kaiju buddies, attacking the kaiju deer and the kaiju buff. He's like, what the fuck, man? They're just living their lives. He'll fuck you up. There's no question about it. But when you're not doing that, he'll help you. He'll be honest with you. And it helps that you have a hot blonde with you, too. <laughs> Named Brie Larson. He's like, oh. But another thing, too, he's not fucking lusting after. Like, Khan's not kidnapping Brie Larson. She's not a damsel in distress. No, he's 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 a good guy. He's a good guy. Even when he accidentally does something, he's like, oh, shit, I'm so sorry. Like, I love this. I love this take on Khan. It's, 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 it's so refreshing and so cool. Uh, and I think it's as respectable uh, length too. Like Peter Jackson's con is obnoxiously long. It's what three hours and five minutes. Like the original 1933 King Con, I think it's like an hour forty. You do not need to add on an extra hour, uh, um, you know, and a half to that film. You just do not fucking need it. Um, but this one, almost two hours, perfect. Plenty of monster battles, plenty of fun stuff to do with the characters. It, I think it's by far the best. It's the best. King Kong adaptation or readaptation since probably the 76 film, which came out, you know, at this point, 40 plus years ago. So probably the best one since that. I think it's even better than that. I think if my, my rankings of Kong movies at this point, chat, it would go this film, Skull Island, 
uh, then the 33 King Kong, and then uh, King Kong, the, the 76 movie. That's, that's, that's what I feel. Some of you might disagree. or agree to disagree. That's totally fine. That's how I feel in my heart of hearts, chat. But now, chat, we must start. Great fucking opening, chat, because we start in 1944 in the South Pacific, chat. And we get a fucking plane battle in the sky. At least we hear a plane battle, chat, because we hear the, you hear the, and we hear, explosions, explosions. And we cut to a sun, and we see, ah, we see John C. Riley falling to earth, screaming, his ass off, chat. Just, ah, just falling down, chat. But thankfully, he activates his parachute, G.I. Joe, and he lands on an island, chat. He lands on an island. But then, chat, he sees another fucking plane coming down. It's a Japanese Zero, chat. Japanese Zero. The plane that was used by the by Imperial Japan during World War II. And he watches this other guy fucking fall down there and boom, he fucking lands. And John C. Riley goes over this guy and he's like, oh shit, we're at war, baby, okay? Fuck it. They pull, take out their gun shit and they start shooting at each other and they miss. They miss Chad because they just fell to goddamn earth. They're all like, ha, ah. they're trying to get their bearings. But John C. Riley, a very young, handsome John C. Riley, runs out of ammo. But the fucking, you know, Japanese zero pilot's like, hey, man, I don't need a gun. And he pulls out a samurai sword. It's like, God damn it. Why didn't the, the, the United States airmen, why didn't they get fucking samurai swords and shit or like a machete? They were like, well, if they have a situation like this where they have to fight the Japanese pilots, these soldiers, they got fucking uh, katanas. Uh, we, we, we got nothing. <laughs> and he sees, he's like, fuck. And he just takes off into the jungle shed on this. And he just starts running his ass off. And the Japanese zero pilot's coming after him. He's like, Ah, he's like, oh, just trying to escape. Eventually, uh, you know, they're tripping over rocks. They're tripping over rocks, trying to get up this creek chat, thick vegetation, everything. And uh, eventually, John C. Riley, young John C. Riley, comes to a precipice chat, overlooking this, this cliffside, overlooking this massive, just like you see all these lakes and, and, and streams and just thick jungle chat. He's like, oh my God. And then the fucking Japanese zero pilot comes up to him and he's like, ah, oh, shit, here he goes. He's got the samurai sword. And he thrusts it. He's trying to slash John C. Riley a couple times. And he tries to thrust the sword. And this, this is like, ooh, this movie's surprisingly violent. Like, again, th I, the deaths in this movie, it's not just like, oh, someone got squished or someone fell off something. It's like people are like, ooh, that, that, that looks like it hurt. Like, I'm like, they were pushing. This is a hard, very hard PG-13 movie. Like, I could have almost seen, like, if you added, have, have a little more blood in it, which they definitely could have. There's actually a, quite a bit of blood in the film. You could have had an R-rated movie here. But, like, he stabs at John Cena and he grabs the sword with his hands. And the guy's just pushing in. And John Cena's like, ah! As the sword is just cutting right down all of his fingers. I'm like, ooh! He's like, ah! And the guy's, like, pulling back. He pulls back the sword and cuts his fingers even more. Like, oh, my God, he's got to cut all your fingers off, man. And then he's like, shit! And, but John Cena, he just goes at him. He, he jumps on him, knocks the katana out of the way, chat. But fucking this Japanese Zero pilot has another smaller katana. He's got katanas up the wazoo. And he pulls out this fucking katana. And he's about to oh, stab John Cirelli when they're fighting. And then, boo, this giant fucking monkey fist, chat. He monkey. We got a giant eight fist just comes out of fucking nowhere, chat. Goes boom, right next to them. They're like, what the fuck? And then you see another one. You see the left hand go boom. And it lands right down. And you see this thing lift its up itself up chat and is staring at them we're staring at Khan himself king of skull island chat by the way we are about less than five minutes into the movie and boom first fucking monster shots like here we fucking go give it to me i love that they're like we're not being around the bush we're gonna give you monsters we're giving you monsters right here and they're like oh and they're looking in the very eyes of Khan chat and then we do a hard fucking cut we do a hard goddamn cut, chat, yeah. and we see a wonderful opening credits, very, again, reminiscent of the original Godzilla. We go through, like, newsreels and history uh, ever since World War II, how the world has changed, chat. Yeah. Go to the 50s, you know, the start of the, you know, the really, the start of, like, the, the, hot, the, the Cold War, like, the hot part of the Cold War, of course. All the changes in technology and weaponry and thing. We see the, you know, the uh, the Korean War. Uh, we then go to the 60s and we see the assassinations of, of JFK, uh, of Martin Luther King Jr., of Bobby Kennedy, chat. P putting men on the moon, all that. Advances in technology until we eventually hit, we're in, in Vietnam. And now that's where the movie starts, chat. We're about in like 1975, I want to say, 1975. The, 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 the war in, in Vietnam is de-escalating, chat. 
you know, the Nixon administration. No, not the, I guess we're, yeah, we're around, we're around that time. We're in the 70s or whatever, mid-70s. And it's like uh, we're de-escalating the conflict, Chad, taking our troops out of there. Extra's like, get, get, get them the fuck out of there. Uh, and then, Chad, we cut to Washington, D.C. We see all these fucking hippies. We see all these hippies, you know, protesting the war, man. And who do we see first, Chad? Uh, fucking John Goodman. John Goodman and his assistant, Chad Poindexter. I don't know what his name is, Chad, but he's a nerdy-looking guy. He's got glasses. And so his name is Poindexter, Chad. That's the way it's got to be with me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pixelmite, thank you for the 100 biddies. Welcome to the stream. I'll be doing very well. Thank you for your generosity. You're always so generous on my streams. Cheers and salute to you, my friend. Mm. And I love it because they're all wearing the uh, 70s attire. Like This movie, again, has, has great costumes. Great sets, really immerses you in the 70s. Like it has, again, it has a personality, unlike in Godzilla movies. And so the fucking John Goodman sees these goddamn hippies. I'm all about the monsters. Don't you know? Don't you know about the monsters? I'm not crazy. You're crazy because chat. We also see John Goodman in uh, some of the uh, B roll. Oh my god, Pixel Mike coming in there with the five gifted subs. And funny enough, to Monster Kawasaki, how appropriate. To Flesh and Blood, the uh, to the uh, Escape Artist, Silver Streak, and Friars. Thank you, Pixelman, for your generosity. Woo! Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will enjoy this. I'll enjoy being serenaded by the Kotor theme channel. We'll jump, jump right back in it. Very good, very good. Thank you so much. Easy 86, welcome to stream to Scyther. You know, while this is going on, I'm going to go turn my fan up. Thank you, thank you. The movie got me too excited. I'm getting way too excited talking about this film. This is what happens sometimes. Thank you. Oh, yes. Is that the, is that the, that, oh, there it is. I think this is the last one. Thank you so much. And congratulations, you lucky sons of bees. You are the winners of, or the, uh, the winners, yes, of five new emails along with ad-free viewing. Congratulations. And Pixel Mike gifting another sub to Uthadar. Thank you. That's six gifted subs. Back to back to back. I love it. Thank you. Mm. Yes. Yes. Chat. Thank you so much. Oh, appreciate all your support tonight, chat. It's absolutely amazing. It helps keep the lights on, chat. Literally, literally keeps the lights on. But fucking John Goodman, he's like, I don't care about hippies. I care about monsters. Because we learn, chat, we learn. Uh, that he is the uh, founder of uh, of Monarch. He's the founder of the organization, Chad. And this is like this is the organization that we actually see. This does a, a lot of good job world building. This movie, um, like Godzilla 2014, actually does some good world building. But I like that John Goodman. He was the founder of Monarch because of a very traumatic experience that he had uh, when he was a sailor, Chad, in the Navy. He saw something, Chad. He saw something. I thought it was pretty cool. I'll tell you what that is in a bit. I was like, oh shit, it's him. We'll get to it, Chad. But because of his traumatic experiences and what he saw, uh, he started this. Oh my God, Judas! Oh shit, we're gonna get a hype train. Chad, I think we're gonna get a fucking hype train. I think it's about to happen. Judas, thank you so much for gifting us up to Thinking Gaffy. Think Gaffy. I love it. Thank you, Chad. Oh, well, one more person needs to sub or gift or use bits. Woo, Chad. Hold on. I might hold off. Might hold off. We're gonna do a little hype train chat. The hype trains are always incredible. They're they're they're, they're very kind. My heart starts pit a pattern. Kaz Faith, thank you so much for the four bitty donation. Carmen Hayes coming up the twenty five bitties. Psycho cards. The world's been pretty insane for a while now, so I hope everyone is doing good. It absolutely has psycho cards. No question about it. I'm doing very well. People have been very kind to me. It's been great to do this. Deadpool coming in there with five biddies. Pixel Mike coming in with another hundred biddies. Thank you, guys. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What if you see something, leave it alone. It is an option. Yes! I'm green. Don't fuck with it. Don't start an organization uh, hunting monsters. Don't do that. Don't bring problems to you. I mean, that's what John Goodman does. Jay. He brings problems to himself. Should have done, but he's obsessive. People thought I was a crackpot until I saw this thing. Killed my entire crew. We'll get to it. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Mm -mm -mm. I just want. I just want. I just want to make sure because if we if a hype train activates, if Sam Jackson left shit alone, then just, I know exactly. <laughs> well, Sam Jackson, he let Sam Jackson. He's obsessive. He traded one con for the other. That's what the movie's like. Okay, that's pretty fucking corny. Like he was fighting the Viet Con, and now he's going to fight. 
King Con. <laughs> Charlie got a whole new face. <laughs> a little different, though, than fighting, you know, villagers of AK-47s, uh, and you know, compared to, like, a giant fucking ape. <laughs> Oh, wow, Chet. Seriously, thank you for listening. And there's the hype train. Boom. I'm going to enjoy this hype train, Chet. We'll get back to the review. Thank you for your generosity. To Sweet, call me Hazel. Giving the sub to Sweet Tooth Willie. That's a good name. I like that name. Thank you, thank you. Show coming up the 10 minutes. My heart's a pit. Oh, we're on a level 3 hype train, Chet. It was on a delay. It was on a delay. But boom, there it is. There it is. And Caspi coming in there with, uh, let me go ahead and think of it, the 7 bitties. No name, woman with the 250 biddies. Thank you so much. Mm -mm -mm. Love it, Chad. Chugga, 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 choo, choo. Hell yeah. Thank you, guys. Wow, woo, wee, woo, indeed. My condition, my condition is in. Thank you again, no name woman. Mm. Hype, getting hype. Mm hmm. Having a Captain Ahab for your kaiju is, is a good... No, it is. It is. It's it's smart for the movie. It's like, oh, it makes sense. It just shows you, like, oh, this guy's fucking nuts. <laughs> and he uses every excuse. It's a... What? Pixel might? Oh, my God. You get to pick two episodes of TV. You get to pick two episodes of TV that you want me to do a spoiler review for. Boom. Pixel with the 2,000 biddies. wow we will hype train overload, chat. Thank you, Pixelmite. Chris Sears, the keeper of the of the of the TV episode. So I gotta give him that title too. Thank you. Oh my god, currently at level four hype train chat. Wow. Mm. What universe would Khan and Zilla fit in best? DC or Ma Marvel? Uh, uh I don't know. Like Zilla? Like like uh, the 98 Godzilla or just Godzilla in general? I would say, uh, I can definitely see Khan, like, in, in Marvel. I think that'd be fun. Like, the tone of that movie feels very marvelous. Uh, come here, so for any new people, every five of these allows you to choose a song for Mr. Rev. 7 to sing, rap, and rebel. That's true. JT, Grim with the 1,000 biddies, thank you. Then let's keep this hype train rolling. It's a chugging chat. It's a choo choo chewing. Thank you. Where the hose at coming in there with, thank you, JT. Thank you for the 1,000 biddies. JT, come on, uh, uh, aware of the hose coming in with 18 biddies. Thank you. Oh my god. Oh my god. Has a uh, Godzilla for the Justice? I, I imagine so. I imagine they've, they've done like guest appearances featuring Godzilla. Pixelmite coming there with 15 biddies. Thank you, Pixelmite. You've been so kind, so generous. This is an awesome. That's why I always say to you, you are the best fucking community on Twitch. There's no one better than you. There's so many great and kind people here, so many generous people. It really does help you. What an, act, what a, what an incredible way to start the stream. I mean, hope you've been enjoying the, 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 the review so far, chat. Talking about a crazy uh, John Goodman and John C. Riley almost getting his fingers cut off by a samurai sword. It's been pretty fun so far. A lot of crazier shit happens in the movie, uh, uh, by the way. Yo, what's up? Uh, too tall, welcome to you. What's up, uh, my brother Chris? It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you. Too tall, welcome. Deadpool coming with another 100 biddies. Thank you all aboard the hype train. Oh, it's a chugging, man. It's a chugging along. Thank you, Deadpool. Good to see you. Mm-mm-mm. Very kind, very kind, chat. I actually might get some more before I continue my review because I'm a thirsty boy, chat. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Now it's going to be fun, chat, because after I do my uh, Skull Island review tonight, I'll be doing Godzilla, King of the Monsters, on Friday, along with all those fun watch parties we'll do. Doing uh, the first few episodes of Invincible and more Falcon or Soldier. Uh, two episodes of any show. Any show? Any show? Pick some money. Go for it. Or it could be, you know, two episodes of a show or you know, what, what have you. Totally up to you. Yep. You are so generous. Same with you, JT. You could pick one, too. If you've donated 1,000 biddies, boom. 1,000 biddies a pop. You got a, you got a TV. What songs? I don't know. Uh, Naya Brownie, she's the keeper of the songs, as we all know, chat. And she usually uh, gives them to me, and I just do them. I don't question her. I don't question her, chat. It's not my place. Uh, what streaming service will you watch on? Con or Godzilla vs. Con? HBO Max. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you're talking about um, Falcon and Soldier, Disney Plus, and Invincible is Amazon. That's how I'll be doing it, chat. I might have Chi with my pick. Housing Ultimate Abridge. All right, episode one, I'll do it. I will do it. You don't want to do a uh, uh, sound uh, song. I'll do it after the review. If you want to save it for the review, I will do a song. 
So, so if Sans Chef, for those of you who don't know, I serenade you for free if it is indeed your birthday. Or if you donate 500 biddies, I will serenade you upon that price point. Uh, Two dollars your day today, Chris. I just got I was whip practice, but it's great to be here. It was good. No, it was a good day. I did a couple of commentaries. I'm very happy about. Uh, I, I I'm switching my mobile plan to something a little more inexpensive, and I'm just dealing with some issues right now, Chad. Sadly, they they have to check my credit rating, and so I have to send in a whole bunch of stuff, and I have to wait now. So I'm hoping that I don't have to pay for my current mobile service. Uh, because then I want to get on a new one, because that would really suck. Uh, so hopefully it goes through quick. I had to send in my social security card and my driver's license. I was like, all right, got to go there. No, so no, Nye Brown. That's true. Nye Brown, she's keeper of the sun shit, as we all know. As we all know. I like hearing the monsters' individual scenes, but as a whole, it felt like destroying scenes from the. I'm right there with you, right, right, seven. I'm right there with you. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I'll go into more detail on Friday, but yeah, I feel the same way. I feel, I feel the same way, Chad. No, Chad, thank you. The hype train is almost over, but thank you for your incredible generosity, Chad. Just kind of where Godzilla played basketball with Charlie, uh, uh, Charles Barkley. Yeah, that's right. I think I've seen that before. At least uh, pictures of it. Either panels of Oh, where the hoe is at? Continuing the hype. It's not over. I'm not going nowhere. Where the hoe's at? The 500 biddies. There you go, Chad. I'll do a song of your choice then. Where the hoe's at? Oh, my God. Naya's sleepy. She sleeps yet. She needs her rest, okay? She is a brownie abomination, as we know, and she needs her rest. You know how tiring that is, Chad, to be a brownie abomination? My God. <laughs> you know what, Chad? Thank you for all this hype. I'm going to be right back. I'm just going to get some liquid inside me. I'm getting thirsty, Chad. I'm getting thirsty. So uh, uh, please entertain yourselves amongst yourselves and stick around, you crazy kids. The review's still going to happen. I'll be right back. I have returned. I have obtained the beverage. Mistress Chair. Huh? Call me Hazel, chat. She will assassinate Mistress Chair. That's what she does. Nothing that can be done. <laughs> Sweepy Brownie. Blap, blap, blap. <laughs> Those are her snores. Blap, 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 blap. <laughs> oh, Lord. I got to stay hydrated. It's good. That's what I got to do, chat. I got to stay hydrated. That's what I'm doing right now. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, Pixel Mike, uh, if you need time to design the episodes, you can come in uh, anytime. Yeah, no, no, you can take your time. You can take your time. No issues whatso whatsoever. Just remember that, uh, that you can indeed select some. Select some good ones. Maybe some good shows or some bad shows. I've done everything and, and everything between. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing uh, one this Saturday, which should be very fun. It'll be great. Yeah, chat. I will be playing uh, Batman Arkham Asylum for probably the time being, chat. Until, I'm like, April, I might be, I'm going to check out that Outriders. I really like that Outriders demo. And I'm thinking of playing that for quite some time. But hopefully I'll be able to finish, I don't know, let's see, Batman Arkham Asylum. So I played this today, then Friday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think I'll be able to play a lot of it. Yeah, until then. Yeah, probably finish that in about two weeks. It'll be good. I like to do all the side missions in that game, chat. It's fun. I'm not getting all the Riddler trophies. Fuck that shit. I'll solve all the riddles. Solving all the riddles in the game is fun, but not Riddler trophies? No, thank you. Too much. Uh, uh, Son is get off by Prince. I'll do it. I will do it. Or it doesn't look appealing to me. I really like what I played, though. That's the thing. It's like I'm right there with you. I'm not into the that, that kind of game. So, like, it looks like a live service game. I guess it's not, technically. Uh, but it appears to be one. But uh, I liked it. I liked what I played. Come here, Hazel. When are you going to review Billy and Mandy? 
Uh, oh, like just do like regular reviews for them, or or to do like uh, do, do I have them in the list? Do I owe an episode to you? Uh, do I owe an episode of Billy and Mandy to you? I'll happily do it. Billy and Mandy's a great show, very funny. Am I gonna try Super Mario 3D? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I have all these game. I have all these games in the list that you guys have. Um, uh, uh, you know, you've chosen to win all these polls, chat. I'll get to them all someday, no doubt about it. I said the Riddler trophies myself. I only got all the Riddler trophies in Batman, Arkham Asylum, and City. After that, I was like, all right, I'm done with this. But I'll do all the Riddler. I'll do all the Riddler Riddler riddles, though. The riddles are actually quite fun going around. The There's not too many of them. I think it's what, what like about 25, 30 of them. That'd be funny. I, I like do, uh, doing those too. Be like, oh, I'll feel a little clever. I mean, Hazel, you said you do it during my second month subscription, but never did. Oh, I did. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> wow, you have a good memory. <laughs> oh, you can add that to the list. You can add Billy and Manny to the list then. Episode one, I'll do that for a uh, for a Saturday. That could be fun because you're going to do a watch party for him. Yes, matter of fact, the AMCC man, this Friday, I'll be doing a watch party for that, which comes out that Friday. I'll be doing it uh, along with Falcon. Oh, my God, Deadpool coming in there with the 1,000 minis. You too. Get selected episode of the TV. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you, chat, for all the hype train success. This was, we got to level five hype train. That is some support. Super cool 147. Think of the file. You're my new Huckleberry. Welcome to the stream. Choo choo. Chugga chugga. That was some strong support. That was some very strong support, chat. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you, chat. I owe you. I got to serenade you. I got to raise my glass. I got to toast you, chat. May the wings of living as a feather, you shake the pillars of heaven as we speak. Cheers and salute to your generosity. Wow. Mm. Amazing, Chad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, my Lord. But now, my friends, now we must get back to the movie review. My scene by scene by scene. By scene breakdown, Chad, for Con Skull Island, Chad. And we, we were, as I said before, John Strahl almost got his fucking fingers cut off by a Japanese Zero pilot. Con showed up. He monkey. Um. A fucking cool montage of things, everything from the 40s to the 70s, Chad. And the opening credits, JT Grimm, he monkey with another 100 biddies for monkey. No doubt about it. Thank you, JT Grimm. Very kind of you. Uh, now, Chad, we're in the 1970s, smack dab in the middle of Washington, D.C., outside the congressional building. Thankfully, Chad, there's no crazy MAGA supporters. There's just hippies. And these hippies, Kelly coming in there <laughs> with the 1,500 biddies. Kelly, welcome back to the stream. <laughs> Thank you for your generosity, Kelly. Wow. I think you were so generous yesterday, too. Thank you, man. Let's be serious. No, thank you, man. Appreciate that. Wow, you are. Mm. You could select an episode of TV, too. No doubt about it. No, welcome, welcome, Kelly. Hope you're having a very nice day. I'm doing my review for Con Skull Island right now. And we got hippies at the Congressional Building chat. And they're actually adhering to, like, they're protesting, but they're not fucking storming the goddamn, uh, you know, Capitol. Like some people did. There's no, no MAGA supporters in sight, chat. But John Goodman's like, I fucking hate hippies. Ah, he doesn't like him, chat. I'm all about the monsters, okay? People don't believe me, but the monsters are real. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. And him and his assistant, Poindexter, chat, he has glasses. He's nerdy. He's... Not helpful in any type of survival scenario or comet scenario. He's practically useless, Chet. By the time we get to Skull Island, he's just like, I did a, I, I wrote a paper on the, this is cool though. So, Chet, we, this is when we hear about the hollow earth th uh, theory. Is the first time we hear about, apparently we're going to be exploring the hollow earth in Godzilla versus Kong. This movie does a lot of great world building here. That's what I'm telling you. They, they set up a lot of shit for these other movies. Whether the other movies do well with it, you know, this is up for debate. But they set up a lot of stuff. And he got Point Dexter here, chap. And he did a fucking paper research on these pockets that are inside the Earth's crust where they're, where they're home to these enormous ecosystems. Uh, and possibly with different types of flora and fauna we've never seen before, chat. And this is just, and this apparently, they, they you know, John Goodman and fucking Poindexter, they found one of these locations, an entryway to this hollow earth where they know it's very shallow and they want to explore it, right? And cool, because that's where eventually they're probably going to explore, chat, in Godzilla vs. Khan. I, I, I believe we see Khan inside there fighting like one of these giant snake bat creatures that's always flying around like they call them the war bats in the movie so i was like okay cool we're setting that up they set that up in this movie so it'll be a perfect jumping off point i imagine you can watch 
Skull Island, and then maybe, I mean, maybe you need to see the Godzilla films, I don't know, but it looks like you can go to Skull Island and then go to King Kong versus Godzilla, perfect, that's how I would do it, champ, personally. But, and they, they are going to the congressional building, Chad, because they have to ask Senator Richard Jenkins, Chad, Sen Richard Jenkins in this movie for about two minutes, and he's a senator. And John Goodman, he went up to this, the secretary of uh, Richard Jenkins is saying, and she's like, I'm sorry, John Goodman, but I rescheduled your meeting. He's like, yes, and I'm rescheduling again to have it back on the schedule. I need money to discover and prove that monsters are real. And she's like, you're losing your goddamn mind. Can I think of the 300 bitty service? Oh, no, 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 don't worry about it, Kelly. No, you're not disrupting, believe me. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the generosity. No problem at all. No problem at all. Thank you. We had a massive hype train earlier. I don't mind at all. Believe me, I can find my place instantaneously. No problem. I got this movie memorized, baby. It's memorized in here. Thank you for your generosity. And he's like, I'm putting it back on the schedules. Monsters are real. And then Richard Jenkins, he comes out of his office. He's like, ah, oh, fucking Jesus. And he's like, Senator, Senator, I need, I need money to discover monsters, okay? I represent my organization, Monarch. We, we need funding or Monarch is, is over, all right? And Richard Jenkins is like, listen, I've given you all this stuff. You know, it's, it's, it's like, it, it's done. Okay, I've given you all these resources. I mean, honestly, do you know people uh, are still like from all these uh, other organizations? Like they're, they're, they're they do the same thing that you do. They're asking for money to study UFOs, and John Goodman has a great line: "Like study UFOs and aliens." And John Goodman says, "Well, those guys are crazy." <laughs> Which I thought was, which I thought was great. I'm not crazy. And but then Poindexter comes in. He says, "Listen." We've discovered an island that apparently is rich in resources, okay? Uh, fossil fuels, uh, you know, uh, rubber, all kinds of things they need for the various war efforts across the world. And also, they want those goddamn Ruskies, chat, them Soviets, getting their, their hands, their red hands, chat, their red frostbitten hands all over Skull Island. Richard Jenkins like, for America? And Poitiers is like, for America? He's like, all right. I'll give you your funding. This is the last time you go there, you scout this shit, you do whatever the fuck you want to do, and you report back to me and see what we got right here. And it's like, excellent, I'll need a lot of money. Also, I'm going to need, thank you, by the way, to Wave Runner 90 for the follow. I'm going to need a military detachment. I'm going to need a military detachment in order to go there, because we might we might fight monsters. Richard Jacobs like, sure, okay, I'll give you one of the, the craziest person imaginable to lead this uh, detachment, Samuel L. Jackson, great. And then, uh, chat, we cut to uh, Vietnam. We're in Da Nang, Vietnam, chat. The Americans are exiting the country. The war did not go very well. They're basically abandoning the South Vietnamese. And they're like, well, fuck it, we gotta go. And they're packing up, chat. We see all these soldiers hanging out. We see, uh, God, and we see a number of uh, character actors. We see fucking Easy E, chat. Easy E from uh, um, the Straight Outta Compton, chat. You know, NWA or VWA, as I would say, chat. Vampires with Attitude, very popular uh, music group. Vampires with Attitude. He's in this movie. We have another other character actors, chat. Uh, we also have another character named Cole, who's kind of like the master of arms of all these people. He's like, he's very wise, but he's like kind of crowdy, talks fucking crazy, and he's always razz and easy each, yeah. Toby Kebbell there, Toby Kebbell just literally just signing his death warrant by writing, you know, it's like, I'm just writing a letter to my son. Boy, I really miss him. I sure hope I can see him again. It's like, you shouldn't have done that, Toby Kebbell. <laughs> that was a mistake, especially in this movie. You're not the Aaron Taylor Johnson in this film, Toby. I can tell you what. But fun fact, Chad, again, as I said, Toby Kebbell plays this character, also does the mocap for Khan. He monkey, Chad. He monkey. So we then cut to Samuel Jackson, who is just ha he just has a thousand yard stare, Chad. He's just staring off in the middle distance, drinking. The whole time, he's like, God damn it, I just want to kill Charlie. I just want to go after the, the, these Viet Cong. That's what I want to do. And I've been denied that. He's so upset. But then Toby Kebbell, Toby Kebbell, he comes on in, and he's just like, uh, sir, we have uh, information here uh, from uh, headquarters. They want to speak to you on a, on a, on a, a not a direct line. And here's the detachment. He's like, all right, thanks, Toby Kebbell. Apparently some operation maybe, or maybe it's just, hey, you got to get your ass out of there sooner than ever. And Toby Kebbell's like looking at Samuel Jackson. And he's like, sir, are you okay? Motherfucker, I said I'm fine. And it's like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And so he leaves. And he continues just drinking and looking at him. He's like, oh, it's bad. And even the, the, all the colors in the movie are great. 
And his office is all lit up in yellows and reds. And then it just goes straight to fucking, um, uh, uh, like, dark blue. It becomes like a Zack Snyder movie all of a sudden. And it's like, that's his outlook. And it's like, all right. And eventually he goes outside, Chad. He goes outside, and he gets a goddamn call. He's like, I got to get on the phone. He calls up the Richard Jenkins or whoever. And he's like, uh, soldier, I need you for one last operation. Are you game for it? And he goes, hell yeah, I am, motherfucker. What do you want us to do? He's like, you need to escort John Goodman and point down into uncharted territory in the Pacific, okay? We don't have a lot of intel on it, but we need you and your boys, okay? You're the, the, you, know, you guys did a great job in the war. He's like, fuck yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Not even asking his men if they want to participate in this kind of combat engagement. But all right, whatever. It's just a simple, uh, you know, uh, recon job. You're going to be dropping, uh, you know, booms in Skull Island. It'll be fine. They're like, but they're geographic measurement instruments. They're fucking bombs. You're dropping bombs on a goddamn uncharted island. That sounds safe. Because I think of it, it's funny you say that. Deep down this movie is Larry Fawn, who shot most of the X-Men movie. Oh, really? 300 Watchmen, Sucker Punch, and BBS. He also shot Super 8 in the pilot episode Lost. Wow. Well, uh, well, this scene felt very Zack Snyder. But there's so much color in the film. <laughs> so I'm kind of surprised by it. It's funny. Um, meanwhile, chat. So Samuel L. Jackson, he just signed the rest of the death warrants of all his fucking men. But then, chat, we cut to John Goodman and Poindexter. And they're, uh, I think, oh, yeah, they're, they're, in, they're in Bangkok. They're in Bangkok, Thailand, chat. And Poindexter's like, why the hell are we in Bangkok? And John Goodman's like, we, we need a, a guide for this. Like, we got these military boys here, but we need someone who could survive the, the jungle. And uh, we need someone who's fucking tough, who's also very handsome, and can smooch the, the lady who's going to be in the movie. He's like, okay. And who's this person, chat? Tom Hiddleston. Very blonde Tom Hiddleston, chat. Tom Hiddleston looks great in the movie. He's very handsome. He's very British chat. Good for him. He's playing some fucking, like, John Goodman point actually. They sit down. It's like, is this the guy? It's like, yeah, but let's wait till he finishes pool. He's playing pool chat with these guys, kicking these guys' asses. They don't like it, chat. They put some money on the line, and they lost. And they try to come up behind him, chat, with some pool cues. And he breaks his pool cue, and he just sticks them right up their asses. And they're like, ooh! And they run away, chat, because when you get a pool cue up the ass, you're not going to want to fight anything. You're not going to want to walk around. you got to go. You're just like, i got to lay down and get this surgery removed. And then he's fucking just drinking all the time. And he sits down. And he's like, listen, uh, nice to meet you, John. Go and point. That's great. Uh, so what you're going to experience is like the worst thing possible. Not only are we going into a jungle. All right. But it's a jungle that's not been explored. Uh, you have to worry about the floor. You have to worry about the fauna. You have to worry about the mosquitoes and everything in there that will eat you. And Juggerman's like, don't worry, man. We're totally prepared for it. No, I'm not prepared for it. But... If you do this, if you do this, I will we'll pay you double. And it's like, fuck, just tell me this like, oh, double. No, you're going to pay me five times that right now, all right? And then a bonus if we come back. And point out, she's like, oh, what do you mean if? He says, Thomas is like, motherfucker, did I stutter if we come back? And he's like, okay. And John Goodman's like, well, hey, you're fucking worth it. Let's go. Eventually, though, Chad, eventually, uh, we cut to uh, uh, Brie Larson, Chad. She's a photojournalist, okay? She was covering all oh, the humanitarian crisis in Vietnam and the neighboring countries. And we see her working in her little, you know, photo studio, Chad, the little, the little red, the, 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 I forget what it's called, but the photo development room where it's all red and shit. And she gets a call on the phone, chat. And apparently, her contact, they're like, there's going to be a big fucking operation uh, going down. Uh, it's really top secret or, or whatever, but maybe you can get in. Maybe they'll, they'll want some pictures taken. Maybe they're, maybe they're looking for a photojournalist. And she's like, okay, cool. Oh, no, they, that's what they are. They're, work, they're looking for a photojournalist to record the stuff they're going to see. That's what they want. Like, John Goodman requested a phone journalist on, on the team. And so she's like, cool. And so then, Chad, we cut. Where I guess we're now in Bangkok. Everyone's getting all situated. We're getting all the fucking equipment on all the ships. Then they're going to uh, go off. And then uh, Brie Larson, she's, uh, she's, you know, she's walking up there. She sees the, the, the one, like, head. This guy, you've seen this actor play this character in countless movies, Chad. He's this name. His name is Steve. And he's always a fucking dick in everything because she goes hi i'm brie larson i'm the photojournalist here and he goes oh brie larson is a wo a, a woman we can't have ladies on this to this trip this is a combat scientist trip we can't have any woman on here no women no ladies no thank you she goes yes i am a woman okay and i've been in all these sorts of combat engagements asshole and then fucking samuel jackson comes over and he's like, motherfucker, chill. And it's like, you're Brie Larson, huh? He says, I am, I am. He goes, uh, so you've been in the shit? She's like, I've been in the shit, Samuel Jack. It's funny, because they've been in so many movies together at this point. 
you know, they, they, they did this. I think this was their first film. Then they did Captain Marvel. Then they did that Netflix film together. I imagine they're going to be in Captain Marvel sequels and Avengers movies and shit. They've done a lot of movies with, with each other. And they have great chemistry. I actually wanted more scenes of them in this movie. And you're like, well, you've been in the shit, Brie Lars. She's like, I have been in the shit. And uh, was, I'm surprised there's any, you know, more of you photojournalists here. It's because of you, you, you people, you people that we lost the war. And she goes, listen, we're just recording the war and what, what, what was being seen. We're, we're just telling the truth. He was like, well, maybe people are too dumb and naive to hear the truth, okay? Maybe we got to protect them. And Brie Lars is like, that's really ignorant and arrogant to say. And that's not very, uh, that's not very, that's not a very good thing. And he's like, fuck, lady. Just, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And she's like, I'm going to go on the boat. Bye, Samuel Jackson. She goes on the boat. And everyone else starts to board the boat. Yeah, go these other people on here. They're bringing in all of this, all of this munitions for whatever reason. Like, uh, like, like tons of artillery, uh, like miniguns, chat, all sorts of RPGs and missiles. It's like, if this is a geological survey in an unknown area of the Pacific, I mean, why, why the heavy payload? Do they think the enemy there? Do they think the fucking Soviets or the Viet Cong are there? It's like, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there's more to it. And so eventually, chat, they get on this boat. And Brie Larson, she starts investigating all this shit because he's like, all right, there's more to this. He just don't want me to fucking record to take pictures of the trees and the bushes and stuff in the natural wild. There's something else going on. And she discovers all these munitions, all this heavy artillery chat, uh, fuck, uh, uh, an infinite amount, an infinite amount of napalm. Chat. I mean, it is Vietnam after all. She's like, what the fuck is going on here? This looks like a combat mission. And all of a sudden, like Tom Hiddleston just shows up like Batman and he says, hey, we are the prettiest people in this this movie let's have the sex and the chat like they're almost like every single time we see a scene with them like they, they get closer to, uh, to each other or touching each other and everything like that but it's like oh my god they are the prettiest people in this film and they're like so close to each other throughout this scene and they're doing the whole back and forth thing trying to be you know the alpha if you will but they, they're, they're matching chat they're, they're, they're matching word for word it's hard it's like god damn it I, I hate you but I want to fuck you it's just, just do it just you two of you just get a room already uh, and so it's I like their their uh, rapport with each other, Chad. It's 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 quite funny. It's quite funny. Eventually, Chad, the you know we have all the Marines. They're bonding and everything, having a goddamn good time. Can we believe we're fight we were fighting Charlie and now we're here of all these scientists? It's crazy. And we got John Ortiz. He's in the movie. Chad he plays a nerdy scientist, friend of Poindexter. Also, there is um. There's a Chinese actress in this film, chat. I don't know what her name is. Let me go ahead and give, give some respect to this lady. She's not, honestly, she just, uh, uh, Jing Tian. She plays Jing she, Tian, chat. Uh, San Lin. San Lin's the name. And she, uh, her and, and Poindexter hook up. They're like, are you getting in a romance with him? I guess so. Uh, so we got, uh, you got Ling and you got Poindexter and they smooch a lot in the movie. Um, they're like, okay, PowerPoint show. We got to tell you guys what's going on. And so they have the Marines on one aisle and all the scientists on another aisle. And John Ortiz is up there and basically say, hey, we're going to go to this uncharted territory. We have these satellite images. We think there's a whole bunch of resources there. What we're going to do is we're going to drop these uh, devices, these explosive geothermal devices to, like, measure things. And, like, Tom Hiddleston goes, so you're going to drop, like, a whole bunch of bombs. And he goes, no, they're explosive geothermal devices. And he goes, okay, if you think that's safe, if that's what you want to call them, all right. And the, all the soldiers are like, woo, we're going to be scientists, boys. And then Steve, the scientist, Chad, who was very rude and sexist to Brie Larson, goes, you guys are not scientists. And they're like, what? fuck you, man. We're just joking around. Don't be an asshole. Jesus Christ. Fucking Steve, Chad. And so they're like, all right, break team. We're going to be going out there. Uh, we, th we, we think the northern part of the island is going to be a good LZ. Uh, so we're going to be on the island for about three days. And then after that three days, we're going to get a pickup right there. If, you, if you're not there, then you're fucked. We're not coming back for you, chat. Because we cut outside the ship, this giant barge there on sailing towards this thing, speeding towards it. And I'm like, oh, fuck this. This entire island is encased in like a giant uh, hurricane that's constantly moving and going around it. And I'm like, that's not safe. Like, there is red lightning bolts. Not just regular lightning, she has like regular lightning and a giant massive storm covering an entire island in the middle of the Pacific. It's scary enough. Why is the lightning red? <laughs> I don't want to go there. <laughs> no fucking thank you. But they're all going out there. 
And John Ortiz is like, ah, uh, yeah, I have some concerns about the giant red lightning storm that's going on out there. And John Goodman's like, ah, you know, we can just break through this pocket right here. Can we, Sam L. Jackson? And Sam L. Jackson's like, hell yeah, we can, John Goodman. No problem. Let's get your asses in gear. Marines, we are moving. And John Ortiz is like, I think maybe I should just stay here at a desk. And John Goodman's like, we need you. We need you to measure the earth. And he's like, I can do that at a desk. He's like, no, we need you on the field. He's like, all right. And so everyone starts piling into all these helicopters, chat. Uh, you get all, and they got all the munitions on there, all the napalm, all the guzzoline you could possibly imagine. And they fucking take off. And uh, by the way, this, mo this movie is just filled with every rock song that you have ever heard in uh, a Vietnam film, chat, from like the old 60s to the 70s. They hit all, they hit every single one. And like that to me is, a, they can be a little obnoxious. Like, okay, I get it. It didn't bother me. I was like, all right, it's, 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 just, it's just so, it's just indulging in that time period and what these people listen to. And so they're, they're all in this helicopters. And by the way, I think, isn't it true that, like, there was a very high percentage of helicopters lost in Vietnam, you know, because they would just constantly be shot down by RPGs and shit. Listen, is that fucking true? I feel like that's true, Chad. And I was like, I don't know if I want to go in one of these helicopters that apparently they're the, they, they, you know, they, they, they crash very easily inside of a giant fucking storm that encloses an entire uncharted island with the storm having red lightning bolts striking things randomly. I don't think I want to do that. But like, fuck it. Let's go in a goddamn storm chat. Witness me. I live, I die, I live again. And they go right into the storm chat. And they're all like, like, holy shit, strong cross breeze and everything, lightning bolts having every which way. And it's like, holy shit. And then Samuel L. Jackson just decides to do a very villainous monologue. And it's like, have you motherfuckers ever heard the story of Icarus? Him and his father were in prison. And they used a whole bunch of candle wax and feathers and made themselves some motherfucking wings. But Ic and they're like, what are you doing? What are you saying? <laughs> And Icarus, oh, he was crazy. He was more, he was, um, he was more arrogant than his father. And when his father told him not to fly too high, flying too high to the sun, the sun did so. And the sunlight, the heat of the sun melted the feathers on uh, and the wax. And little Icarus, he crashed down below. And it's just like, I, I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and they're like, sir, sir, well, well, please, please stop talking. He's like, ha ha. And they break through the fucking uh, storm chat. And it's calm. It's calm. We see some beautiful, you know, cinematography chat i mean cgi sisters no doubt about it but it's beautiful chat all sorts of colors all these giant islands and things all this vegetation and trees it's all oh, it's so beautiful i love it chat. this might as well be monster this might as well be the monster island of, of this monster verse godzilla verse if you will because i don't think monster island exists but you know like you know the, the bro typical one from like the 60s and 70s era but this is kind of like monster island and they're they're fucking going in chad they're going in and they are, they're like, oh, bring the arse, taking all the pictures and, and shit, chat. And they, we see kaiju deer. They're not really big deer, but I like to call them kaiju deer. Kaiju deer and stuff. And, you know, they land at one of the landing zones, chat, drop off all this equipment and stuff because they got to take it out because they got to do surveys. And Point Dexter and Lynn, they're on the scene. While all the rest of the, uh, uh, you know, Marines and soldiers, they go back up in there because they got to uh, drop the explosive geothermal devices. And so everyone's in the helicopter chat, and they start dropping all these explosive geothermal devices. They go in, and they start getting all these readings. And apparently, chat, uh, it's very shallow. And there is something, un like, I, like, I love it. They hint it. there's something else underneath here. And it, because of, of, of what, what the, 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 the reverberations that they're getting. It's like, there's another landmass under here, and it's, it's huge. There's another Earth chat, uh, an inner Earth, which I think is very cool because we're, we're going to explore that in Godzilla vs. Khan. And the, they continue to drop all this shit down there. And then you see you're following these two pilots and they just dropped their last one. And you're like, yeah, we did it. And all of a sudden, they see a fucking palm tree just coming right at them in the middle there. And they're like, what the fuck? And it goes through the smush. The pilot just explodes like a hot water balloon shit. Intestines and go everywhere. Goes to the other guy, pins the other guy to his left. And just vomiting all of his intestines out. And this thing goes boom! It just it just lands on the ground, explodes, and then we cut to Toby Kebble, who has my favorite line of the movie, where he goes, "Is that a monkey?" <laughs> 
then we see him, chat. We see him over the fucking horizon. Con himself. We need to get out of this place. And he's grabbed this fucking helicopter, chat. And these guys are like, oh, oh, oh. And he's like, oh. And he falls in his mouth. He's, nah, nah, nah. he's, on, he's eating them, chat. He's eating them. He doesn't give a shit. He's eating these motherfuckers. And these help, the fucking Samuel Jackson's like, motherfucker. John Goodman's filming this. He's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Brie Larson and Tommy Hilson are shot. By the way, Chad, we are about 25 minutes into the movie. 25 minutes in the movie. We're getting the first big monster battle. It's so well choreographed. It's awesome. As these helicopters are just, go, you know, it's like, keep a wide berth. It's like, nah, man, Khan can move around. Keep a wide berth and lay into him. Fire everything we got. And Khan is smart. Khan's like, this is the first time he's encountered helicopters before. And so he grabs, like, one of the helicopters by accident, like, on the rotary blade. And he fucks up his hands. like, fuck, ah, oh, shit. Then he just starts hitting him. Like, he starts literally just bitch slapping him, Jay. He starts backhanding the helicopters. He's grabbing some of the other ones. He's, like, like he's, like, he's moving and duking and ducking and weaving and shit and dodging. <laughs> he's forcing helicopters to crash into each other. He's like, oh, okay, this motherfucker's behind me. And he goes, whoa, and he just dodges. And then they hit each other and shit. It's amazing. Uh, eventually, Toby Kebbell's helicopter, it goes off. It crashes in one area. Samuel Jackson's uh, helicopter with this one guy. I don't know the, uh, the character's name. I'm going to call him Detroit because he always talk about Detroit. Yeah, I'm going to call him Detroit. Him and his helicopter go down. Chet, they crash. Brie Larson. I like he, And John Goodman's with uh, Samuel Jackson in and, and Detroit. Brie Larson, Tom Hiddleston's copter, it, it fucking chat, crashes. Easy and uh, Cole's... Um, Captain Cole's uh, uh, crashes too, and they're all being separated. And then finally, Samuel J. He's just watching from the ground as as Khan is just laying a smackdown chat that is so beautiful against all these copters. What's great about this is like Khan didn't attack them because they're there. He attacked them because you see what they're doing. They're firing these missiles down, and they're burning the fucking jungle. They're killing all the kaiju deer. And all that, killing all these things. They're like, Khan's like, no, don't do this. Khan's a good guy. He helps all, all the things there. Hey, if you're not fucking with him, he's not going to fuck with you. And matter of fact, if you don't fuck with him, he'll actually help you most of the time. And so he's like, he sees this, like, what are you doing? And he comes over there, he starts backhanding all of them, chat. And I love it because Samuel Jackson's watching all this destruction, all these fires and shit. And Khan's just so epic, so cool. We see this one thing, and my favorite thing. Everyone's going to Samuel Jackson, like, sir, we got to move. And Samuel Jackson, he, this, this is another point where I'm like, you fucking know what you're doing. We're he just goes, this motherfucker. <laughs> He's just mean mugging Khan, chat. Where Connie has two helicopters. He grabs both of them midair and goes, ah, and they explode. And Khan's entire, like, besides Khan's face, are all on fire. And he's just looking at Samuel Jackson. And Samuel Jackson's looking at Khan like this. I'm like, this is, this is, what, this is when you, you nailed it. This is what you needed. This is what the tones of all the movies should be, is you need to have a character like Samuel Jackson literally s trying to stare down or stare up at a kaiju. That's what you need. He's like, I eat, and that's and in this moment, Samuel Jackson traded in the Viet Cong for King Kong. He's like, whatever I do in this movie, I'm going to kill that monkey. <laughs> I'm going to kill him. <laughs> and eventually, Khan, he just destroys everything. He's like, well, I'm done. Oh, no, before that. And you get a great scene where they all, like, they crash and, and uh, they go back to the one area where uh, Poindexter and Lin are, right? And Khan is chasing these two soldiers who are shooting at him. And this one, the like, two soldiers, one soldier's like, fucking run to the side, you idiot. And the guy's like, oh, he's doing the Prometheus thing. He's doing, uh, what's her name from Prometheus chat? Charlie Theron, where he's just running a straight line. Khan just fucking, boom, just, 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 you know, just squishes him chat with his big monkey feet. And the one guy takes a refuge with uh, Poindexter and Lin, but they fucking and take off he goes what and con just he's like oh yeah yeah no just go to the side and he side swipes him Chet, he just goes i'll just do this and he literally just puts his hand in the ground and goes yeah and he flings this guy flings this guy Chet, he's like oh hits another helicopter chap it's another helicopter hits the windshield and they're like fuck i think this was uh tom hiddleston's and um Aubrey larson's helicopter and he gets sucked up into the rotary blades and just is shredded blood everyone everyone's face i'm like oh oh it's in my mouth and then they crash it's like that's what i'm talking about chat that's what i'm talking that's what we need and Khan's like 
Well, I'm done. <laughs> he just walks away. <laughs> he just walks away. Yeah. Oh, it was, it, was be- it was a beautiful action. We are about 25 minutes in the movie at this point. And it's like, that's what I'm talking about. And that's what Godzilla, Godzilla needed an entrance like that in 2014. Don't, you know, have him all. Here we go. Godzilla moment. He's going to square off the Muto and cut. No. Now, see, if Gareth Edwards directed this film, we'd never see King Kong. <laughs> we would never see him. At this point, Samuel Jackson's is like, this is not good. So he, he, uh, we get a scene where uh, uh, Cole, uh, the character, Sergeant Cole, he's, just, he's like, I'm, I'm fucking hungry. He just starts eating all the pork and beans they have, just eating pork and beans and bacon. And he's, he's like, motherfucker, how could you eat in the time like this? We just got attacked by a giant monkey the size of a building. <laughs> and he says, well, it was a very unconventional encounter. <laughs> He said, why are you eating? He says, I don't know what to do with unconventionality. <laughs> this is what I got to do. I got to eat and think upon it. And I was like, that's hilarious. Eventually, they're done. And they collect all the dog tags and shit. And they're like, uh, Samuel Jackson, he's on the radio of Toby Kebbell. Toby Kebbell's guy, he's dead. And it's like, all right, Toby Kebbell, we're going to fucking meet up with you and all the rest of the people that, that, are, are, that are still here, okay? And he's like, no problem, sir. Uh, he's like, just maintain your position. And he's like, sir, I can't read you. I said, soldier, m- m- fuck it, retain your position. And they, the, the radio's all fizzing out, chat. And eventually, uh, Samuel Jackson goes to Sergeant Cole and Easy, e and he's like, where the hell is Sa- John Goodman? And he's like, he's over there, sir. And so Samuel Jackson goes to John Goodman, and uh, Samuel Jackson's like, how you doing? And, so, and, and John Goodman's like, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, you know, I'm doing okay. And he goes, cool, 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 cool. And no, I'm just, well, I want to check on you, see how you're holding up. And Samuel Jackson sits down, and he pulls out this giant fucking magnum and says, you're going to tell me the truth, or I'm going to shoot you in the face. <laughs> John Goodman's like, um, it's the truth I've always known. Monsters exist. And it's like, yeah, no shit monsters exist. This fucking thing just attacked and killed all my men. And it's like, there are more than just him out there. Okay. And, he, and, and John Goodman, this is really cool because then we get the reference to Godzilla right here. Or at least it's, I feel like this is Godzilla. Where John Goodman says he was a survivor of, uh, I guess he, he was a veteran of World War II. Or possibly yeah, somewhere. He served in somewhere in the South Pacific, chat. And uh, in 1954, and he says, um, during that time before the atomic uh, uh, testing was done in the Bikini Atoll Islands, my, uh, my battleship, the battleship I served on was attacked. A thousand men died. I was the only survivor. They said it was an accident, but it was not. That's what they told my family. That's what they told my friends. It was an accident. I saw what did it. And they were trying to kill that thing ever since. And so G- John Goodman, what, what traumatized him so much, Chad, I think it's really cool what set him down this path and, and led him to found Monarch Chat, which is the organization that Dr. Sarazawa is a part of, Ken Watanabe's character is in, in Godzilla 2014. It was Godzilla. John Goodman saw Godzilla and God, Godzilla almost uh, killed the crew and almost killed him. And that's what set him down this path, which I think is really good world building. I really love that. Because, yeah. And so, and, you know, John Goodman's like, there, there are things here that we, we cannot imagine. And he's like, I, I study these things. I have a name for them. They're called, you know, uh, the, he calls them mutos, chat, the, you know, massive terrestrial or- organisms or whatever. And I, I just needed the funding to prove that they're real so we can take this threat seriously. Uh, this is a serious situation. It's like, it's not, the, it's not the war with the Russians. It's no war. There will only be one war. And it'll be of these things. And we need to be prepared for it. And Samuel Jackson's like, all right, motherfucker. Well, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill that thing. I'm going to kill that thing. I'm going to get revenge for my men. John Goodman's like, I don't know if you should do that. And he's like, don't tell me what to do, motherfucker. And he gets up. We're like, Marines, we are moving out. Eventually, chat, we cut back to uh, Tom Hiddleston and uh, Brie Larson and uh, Detroit. And uh, they also have John Ortiz with them. And also uh, some of the other characters. You see Poindexter and Lynn. And they're like, okay, we're going to head in this one direction and see what we can eventually. Like, they're all separated, but they know that if we meet up at this one point, we all head north. Eventually, we'll meet up at the LZ. Because now they have, it's going to be very difficult. They're on shared territory. Clearly, there is very dangerous things here that they've never seen before. And what will probably take them, what would have taken them like an hour, a couple hours to get over the helicopter will take them days now. And they have to contend with all the things that are here. 
And so we just see this one great shot, like Brie Larson. She's taking all these pictures and things, and they're past. It's like this open, like plains of all these ponds of water, and you know they're taking pictures, and they see this giant fucking kaiju water buffalo come out. Chance like it's huge, and fucking Detroit's like, oh fucking water buffalo, and it's you know it's just like eating, it's just eating grass. It's like, I don't know. He's eating algae and seaweed and shit. Just staring at him. He's got these very kind eyes. And Brie Larson is just taking pictures of it. And Detroit is like, Whoa. And fucking uh, Tom Hill says, chill, Mo chill. Relax. It's not going to hurt us. It's not going to hurt us. And he lowers the guy's gun. He lowers his like, okay. And the thing just walks off. He's like, I'm going to eat more seaweed or something. Just enjoying his time. Yeah, that's all it's doing. Eventually, we cut back to uh, Samuel Jackson and uh, Easy e and Cole and John Goodman. And they're walking through a uh, bamboo forest. They're looking for, walking through a little bamboo forest, just enjoying themselves. And they're like, oh, I got some shade in here. It's great. And they have a couple of red. They got Steve. Steve is also with them, Chad. Hey, Steve, you want to sit on the porch? You want to be a big dog? I, I want to be a big dog. Good for you, Steve. Grab a fucking uh, AK-47 and join us. And so they're walking through this bamboo forest, Chad. And listen, you never... You never want to be last in line in, in this movie. All right, because if you're last in line, you will get fucked. <laughs> Fanny, thank you so much for subscribing. I sub your channels only as a Manderville man can. Thank you, Vanny. Two months away from front pooping out, front pooping out there. Twitch, baby, my friend. Good to see you, chat. Please check out Vanisphere's stream. Give this man some support. I would appreciate it. So... Uh, there we have this one guy who's like, don't worry, guys, I'm just going to take a brief break. Ah, oh, drinking some water. What's that? Oh, and then it cuts. You hear the, th you hear like a thunk sound. That's all you hear. And they're like, hey, where's Billy? Billy? Private Billy? And then I'm like, holy shit, we cut chat and we see this giant fuck, well, it looks like a, a giant thick bamboo stalk has gone inside of his mouth, all the way through his body and out his asshole chat. Mouth to ass, ass to mouth, right through. He's like, oh. and it's like, what the hell? And they see, they look up and they go, holy shit. They see a giant fucking spider chat. They're like, oh, and this thing takes its legs out of, uh, it's, it's, it's one leg out of, uh, out of Billy's ass and mouth hole chat. Goes, he's like, oh. I'm like, this, this is a very violent movie. This is like, again, it's, it's, you know, it's on the cusp of art. If there was a lot more blood, it would be, it would be an R rating chat. It's like, oh my God. God, it's like, Jesus, and they're like, fuck, and they're like, they just start shooting at this thing, but it's, it's, it's Casey, Chad's body is almost bulletproof, it's very thick, very thick and girthy, and then it launches, not only do you find a giant spider, which is, which is horrifying enough, it has hentai, it shoots hentai out of its asshole, Chad, like literal hentai tentacles, and they wrap up Easy e and they start sucking on him, it's like, oh, ah! and they're lifting up in the air, and he's fucking freaking out, Chad, so like making little bite marks in him, and she's like, oh, he's scared, and eventually, uh, 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 I think either John Goodman or Cole or someone, maybe Samuel Jackson's like, the fucking legs, cut off the legs! And they start just hacking at the legs of the machetes, chat as EZ is panicking, trying to cut off the hentai that is trying to eat him. And eventually cuts it off, chat. They cut off all the goddamn legs. And the thing can't support itself, chat, because his legs are getting all fucked up. It's getting little nubs. And it falls to the ground. And it's like, ah! And all that shit's gross looking is that these giant disgusting like red eyes with like yellow like gunk in them and it was like oh and Samuel L. Jackson he just pulls out his fucking magnum he just unloads in his fucking head it's like Jesus and he's like alright <laughs> and we cut <laughs> and everyone everyone is just sitting they come like out of the field everyone's just like oh <laughs> he's like alright guys let's get going it's like no <laughs> No, we just saw one of our friends get killed mouth to asshole by a giant spider. And Easy e almost died via hentai, spider hentai, which is the worst kind of hentai, Chad. I mean, hentai's bad. But when it's spider hentai, hoof. -a. And fucking Easy es always covered in this, 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 this yellow, like, it's intestines, it's goop. All this goop, Chad. He's like, ah, oh, fuck. And, he's, and John Goodman's just like, okay, let's get going, taking pictures and shit. And they continue walking. Meanwhile, we cut back to Toby Kebbell. And he has ventured to this, um, I guess, you know, the, this giant lake. I guess it's part, no, I guess it's the sea. I guess he's, he, he, his helicopter crashed more towards the, the, the sea. I think uh, uh, crashed like in the western part of the island. And he's just filling up his, uh, his little canteen, which by the way, I would not drink any of the water here. I don't know what the fuck's in it. There's probably a lot of parasites. 
as far as I know, Chad, I drink that water and a parasite's grow inside my tummy and it'll explode out of me. I'm not doing that. But he's in the water, Chad. And then we hear, he hears this boom, 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 footsteps. And Toby Kebbell is faced with himself. Toby Kebbell, <laughs> King Kong. He plays Kong in the movie. And he's like, oh, shit, fuck. And he hides shit because Kong's just walking around in the sea and shit. And he's just like, Kong's just like, oh, you know, ow. Because he got fucked up by the helicopter's chat. And so he, he kneels near, like, kind of the the the, the, the coastline, uh, right, where Toby, Toby Kebbell's just watching him. And Khan is, he's trying to rinse out his wounds with the water and things. Like maybe using the salt water. He's like, ah, like it stings. He's got this big wound where the helicopter blades hit him on his arm. He's like trying to clean, clean that out, chat. And it hurts. He's taking drinks of water too the whole time. And then he's like, huh. And he goes, blah, and he punches it into the, into the water, chat. And he pulls out a tentacle, chat. It's hentai again. But it's a giant octopus, chat. It's, it's, it's hentai octopus. Octopus hentai. And he just starts fighting with this giant octopus. And this is actually a reference. It's really cool. So Jordan Vogt Roberts wanted to honor uh, the original King Kong versus Godzilla. And one of the initial battles that King Kong has in that 60s era film, chat, is with a giant octopus. And so this is like a little, you know, a little, little wink and a nod to that original movie in the scene. And King Kong is like, he just punches its head and it, all the ink comes out of it. Just, it's like, oh, and then he just starts eating it. She's just having some sushi. He's biting into it. A big fucking chunk of it whizzes right past Toby Kebbell's head. Nearly crushes him, chat. Nearly killed by seafood. And Kong's just slurping this shit up and he's just looking at Toby Kebbell. Uh -huh. And he just, he, just, he just walks away with the giant octopus in Toji. He's like, I'm going to eat the rest of this. And he just continues walking. He just enjoy himself. And Toby Kebbell's like, fuck it. Holy hell. I got to. Oh, that was stressful. I got to take it easy. I got to take it easy. And so then he goes back. Chetty sits on this log. And he's like, ah, oh, man. I really miss my son. Oh, I miss my wife, too. I'm going to continue writing down. It's like, oh, dear Billy. I can't wait to see you again. Oh, can't wait to see your mother and give you and her the biggest hug and kiss in the world. Oh, my God. Because then the log he's sitting on chat starts fucking moving. And it's like, oh, that's probably not good. And it's like, shit. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, he's like, oh, Jesus Christ. What the hell is all this about? And he gets off the fucking log and he starts shooting at the fuck. He's like, ah. And this is a giant stick bug. It's like, ah. The stick bug's like, don't shoot at me. The stick bug's actually look sad. He's like, why'd you, why'd you do that? Why'd you do that? He fucking just walks away. <laughs> he's just like, all right. He's like, you didn't have to do that. I wasn't going to eat you. I'm a vegetarian. And he's like, oh, okay. And then he hears, and he turns around, and he gets vored. He gets vored by a giant reptile, Chad. And what are these giant reptiles? Oh, we shall soon learn, Chad. We shall soon learn. These giant skull crawlers. But then, thank you, Deadpool, for the 10 minutes. Dear Billy, your dad just got ate by some giant lizard monster. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's fucking true. I don't survive with a poor stick bug. He, he, the, store, the, the, poor, the stick bug is fine. Thankfully, in a very uh, 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 thick body chat, the bullets did not kill him. He's okay. He lived. But Toby Kebbell, that's what you get. That's what you fucking get. <laughs> that poor son. He's like, oh. Anytime you turn around, there's going to be a monster that eats you or vores you or sticks things inside you. That's just, that's just, the, that's just what's going to happen, chat. Thank you, Deadpool, for the 10 minutes. Eventually, though, we cut back to um, uh, Tom Hiddleston, Ambry Larson, the rest of their people. And they're traveling through the forest, chat. And they come to what they notice are like man-made structures. And they're like, whoa. And they go deeper into it, chat. And they see all these patterns on the wall and things. And, you know, they're all observing this stuff. And B. Lars is taking all these pictures. And she, you know, focuses on one part of the, this, what looks like this ancient wall. And then she takes the picture. And the wall opens its eyes. And she's like, oh! And it starts moving. It has a fucking spear. And we realize, Chad, these are the human inhabitants of the island. And they all these fucking spears. And they're sick of it. And they're, they've, they're, like, they have to camouflage themselves in order to go out there. So, because they can't fight the kaiju. They can't fight all these monsters, Chad. So they have to do this. Where they literally look like the environment. And they just stand very still, and you don't notice them. They're experts at camouflage. They're all surrounded, chat. Then you hear this one guy going, wait, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And then, chat, we get the best character in the movie, John C. Riley, chat. All the way from the beginning of the film. He's been on the island for 30 fucking years. And he comes, he's this big fucking bushy beard and stuff. And he goes, oh, my God, the village elders... They told me someone was coming, but I didn't fucking believe them. Oh, my friend. He's dead, you know. 
My friend and I, we were so excited. We never thought anyone would come. <laughs> and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> He's like, who are you? He's like, ah, I'm fucking uh, Lieutenant John C. Riley, U.S. Air Service, right? Fought in World War II. You fought World War II? Yeah. Did we win? He goes, which war? He goes, ah, it makes sense. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to show you around. Come on. Come on, let's go. <laughs> and they just follow him and all these fucking people. And they go to this giant uh, structure chat. They go inside this this huge uh, man-made structure, this wall. This wall can only be entered like uh, through. Well, I guess you can enter it like either through land or boat. And they go inside there. This is where all the, the, the people reside, chat, all these natives. And very much better interpretation of the natives, chat. They're not, you know, very offensive. Uh, either Polynesian or uh, or African stereotypes or what have you. They're like, listen, we're just trying to fucking live our lives, goddammit. They have a culture that's based around honor and respect. They go up there and they're like, so these people like uh, built these uh, this this wall, all these walls to keep Khan out. And John's like, no, no, not to keep Khan out. No, 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 Khan's great. No, Khan, he helps out everybody. And we see this great uh, a montage of uh, of Khan. No, here Khan is king of the island. He protects everybody. But ah oh, shit, ah oh, shit. There's something worse on this island than that. He's like, well, what is it? It's like I'll tell you. I'll show you in a bit. Thank you, Batchels, for the ooh, the twenty bitties. John really has the best lines. Moments. He really does. He's so fucking funny. Every line he has in the film is gold. He's just he's just great. You can tell he's just having so much fun with this role. It's very campy, just a very meaty, girthy role, chat. And, you know, he goes to the, the, the village elders, and he just kind of like, you know, because they have this greeting where they just kind of look at each other, and they go, you may pass, you may pass. He's like, here, I'll show you around. Like, these people are great. Not like the rest of us. You know, they don't have any concept of money. No one commits ever, uh, any crimes. They don't have any idea what property is. It's all shared because we all got to fucking survive. There's fucking monsters on this island. And me and my buddy, ah, oh, me and my buddy, Captain Zero, he was great. Until he died. <laughs> Thank you, Nabahe. Welcome back to the stream, good sir. 14 months of a year, a full year and some change. Two extra months thinking about hey, welcome. I'll be having a very nice evening, a very nice hump day evening. Currently in the middle of my review for Khan, Colin Skull Island. It's been fun. Got to the John uh, C. Riley section. Here, I'll come and I'll come and show you. Come on, let's go, let's go. And so they go to we see chat like they're not the first visitors. John C. Riley was not the first outsider to come to this island. We see all these massive structures. We see this giant ship from like the 1930s that the natives had converted into a temple uh, and showing their history. And we're like, well, while he's talking about Khan, we see this montage of like Khan like climbing the island and, and stuff and, and like protecting the floor and fauna. You see this one section. He see, it says there's there's uh, something you know much more. Uh, the, the natives they they built this structure uh, around themselves to keep out all sorts of uh, horrors, you know, giant reptiles and things. And we see that, and then we see, and then but then they felt safer when Khan came. Uh, Khan was you know he was an offspring of of his parents, uh, you know, but they were killed by the very creatures that tried to dominate this island. You know, he's the last of, uh, of his kind that I've seen before. And he's still, they even mentioned he's still, they, they dropped the thing here. Because, you know, we already knew at this point, okay, Godzilla and Kong, they're going to face off. They're going to meet each other someday. And he says he's still very young. He's like an adolescent at this point still. And he's still growing. He's not done growing, right? Uh, and then, you know, it's like because Khan is the protector of this island. And, you know, he, 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 if he's like their god. And if he's their god, then he protects us from the demons that are below, then the hollow earth. And we uh, get, uh, get, they're like, what are you talking about? What, what are these demons you say? And it's like, you know, the natives, they don't dare speak their name. But I call them skull crawlers. And then, <laughs> dude, it all sends, why do you call them that? And Judge Shimali goes, I, I, I just kind of made it up right now. I just, you know, I just, I just want to scare you. <laughs> they're like, Okay, like he, th that's what I love that. Like, you're like, okay, why you come to Skull Coast? Like, do they crawl over skulls? No, he just he just came up with the name on the spot. I just wanted to scare you, all right? Now I'm embarrassed. Well, you call whatever the hell you want now. <laughs> and he continues walking. And then meanwhile, we cut to um, Khan. We cut to Khan, and he's got to help that big old buffalo. Remember that big old buffalo we saw that D Detroit was about to shoot right in the face? We see that. We see the buffalo. And Khan's like, hey, buffalo buddy. Oh no, because he sees that this fucking skull crawler, Chad, is eating its tummy. It's eating out its innards. It's constantly like, no, my friend. And he's like, fuck you. But then there's another scr a skull crawler crawling out of the earth, Chad. And, and, and 
these things that are like fucking clever girls, like Jurassic Park chat. It's like with Muldoon with the raptors where he's hunting the goddamn raptor, and he's got it, and the raptor goes, and she goes, clever girl. Ah, and he eats his fucking face off. Nah, uh uh. Because Connie anticipates this fucking move. He's smarter than Muldoon chat. Because these things go at him, he just grabs them in the air, and he goes, ah, and he just starts, he goes, nah, nah, and just starts smashing their heads together, chat, ramming them in the goddamn ground. So he killed my best friend, the buffalo. And. He smushes them, Chad. He smushes them dead. And Justin Hill is like, listen, now those little skull colors that you encounter, they're dangerous, right? But there's another one. There's one that if Khan goes and he comes up in serious business, the king of the skull crawlers. So you don't want to fuck with that thing. It'd be, it'd be quite bad. It'd be quite bad. And so eventually uh, it's, uh, it, it becomes nightfall, Chad. It's nightfall. Oh, that's the thing. Because the, they're, they're, they want from Justin, like, listen, we have to, we were trying to get to the northern part of the island. And he's like, ha, 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 northern part of the island. <laughs> and he starts, like, like hitting, uh, like, Tom, uh, Tom Hilson in the face, like, just slapping. He's like, oh, you crazy. You're fucking crazy. Nah, no, no, it'll take you forever to get up there. You're never going to get up there. You want to get there, like, in two days? <laughs> no, man, no, no, no. That's going to take you at least two weeks, man. That's a very dangerous path. Now, I do have a boat. He's like, you have a boat? He goes, yeah. Me and my friend were working on it until he died. Ha, <laughs> ha, I'll show you the boat. And so they go out <laughs> to this boat. And what, they, what it is, actually, it's the, the repurposed uh, plane shaft from World War II. John C. Riley's plane and uh, the, his Japanese friend. His zero. And they managed to create a boat with it. It looks like it's about to fall apart instantly. You have John Ortiz is like, this looks like tetanus incarnate. <laughs> I think you touch this. I think I got to get a tetanus shot. And he goes, well, I just I just need to, you know, a little bit more elbow grease. And we can get this thing moving and grooving. And, you know, they're all like, okay, well, we can, we can start working on it definitely. And maybe we can get going. He's like, yeah, at this point, we'll pick up your friends. You said you got some friends. Great. Love to meet new people. I haven't seen new people in 30 years. And I was like, okay, um, we'll, do, we'll do this all together. Meanwhile, they you know they have the montage of putting the, the thing together. We have Brie Larson. She's taking pictures and with all the natives and things. And they're like, you know, they're, they don't know what the camera is. So they're taking pictures with her. It's great. And then she hears some chat. She hears, Whoa. Whoa. and when I hear, like, if I'm on an island, Filled with giant fucking kaiju, and I hear, Whoa, I'm not going out to it. I'm like, no, nope, I'm gonna stay. I'm keeping my ass where I am. But she's like, what's that? And she goes outside the enclosure through the big gate. And they're like, all right, blonde girl want to go out there. White white lady want to go out there. Let white lady go out there. And she goes out there and she sees one of the helicopters apparently crashed on top of a smaller kaiju buffalo chat. And I love it because she goes, it's like, oh, no. He's like, whoa. And she tries to lift the tail of the helicopter. I was like, come on. She, you got to get at least the rest of the villagers, everyone else to come out there to help you. But she tries to lift the tail of the helicopter off the fucking water buffalo chat, right? And eventually, she's like, oh, I'll try again. She goes, and the thing just lifts off. But she wasn't the reason why I lifted off the water buffalo chat because she looks up fucking King Kong. How'd you miss him? <laughs> it's like from Godzilla 2014. How'd he sneak up on her? I'll never know. It got so off football, uh, you know, footballs chat, and he throws the cop to the side, who explodes, and the buffalo is like, "Thanks, Con, no problem, buddy." And the water buffalo, you know, it waddles off, chat. And King Con, he looks down at Brie Larson. Brie Larson's like, "Holy shit! Oh my god!" He looks down at her, goes, "Oh my god, you're beautiful." Because chat. The, King Khan still has that fetish. He loves curvy blonde bombshells. Chad. And Brie Larson is very much that in this movie. He's like, oh, my God. But he doesn't go, come here, bitch. <laughs> and just grabs her and runs off. Khan's like, you're beautiful. Ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, I got to go. And he's like so awkward. And he just run, he just goes off. He doesn't know what to think. <laughs> he's like, I, I, uh, oh, you're pretty. Oh, damn it. I got to go. He just, he just goes away. And she's like, holy shit, takes his picture and shit. Eventually, she goes back inside there, and it's later that evening. And, you know, uh, John C. Rell, he's just, like, learning about, like, the uh, like the outside world at this point. Thank you. These are the five biddies. Yeah, he's a teenager. They don't know what they're doing with the lady. He's just not. He's, like, he's just awkward. I think it's so, this is so funny. Um... Eventually, eventually, uh, uh, it, it's later that evening, and there, uh, all the back and forth between John C. Reilly and them is hilarious because he's like, have the Cubs won the World Series yet? And they go, no, the fucking Cubs suck. This is back when the Cubs did not win the World Series. And he goes, well, the Cubs don't suck. They're my team. They're my team. They're great. They're great. You know, when I went to Wrigley Stadium, oh, Wrigley Stadium, you know, 
There's nothing. You you people, oh, you, you're you pretty. You guys look great. You guys are so pretty. You're beautiful. But you know what's really pretty? Like a cold beer and a hot dog. And he just lo lo looks at his hands and his beer. And he goes, like his imaginary is like, oh, it's not real, is it? <laughs> They're like, no. <laughs> and he goes, but you guys sure are pretty. Boy, I'd love to see that someday. <laughs> They're like, okay. And he even talks to the Detroit. goes, well, what team do you like? I like the Detroit Tigers. Well, fucking Detroit Tigers, they suck. I like them. You know, I mean, whatever. They're not, they're not a good team. And he goes, and the fucking Detroit's like, oh, what would win in a fight? And he goes, what, what, what? A tiger or a cub? And the guy goes, fuck, tiger, obviously. Fucking cub is a little baby bear. He goes, exactly. And he goes, doesn't make any sense. I've been, I'm, listen, I've been on the island for 30 fucking years, but you, you, obviously a tiger would eat a baby cub. Come on. Like, I love the back and forth they have with each other. It's very, very funny. Um, and then we get, like, this moment where he starts talking about, you know, his, 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 his wife. He's like, you know, I left, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, 19, you know, 1940s and, Last letter I got from her, she said that she 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 had our kid. She had a baby boy, and I haven't seen them in nearly 30 years, 28, 28 years to be exact. I mean, if, if I have a wife, had a wife, I don't even know. I'm just, I mean, if, if we make this, it'll, I'll be able to see them again. I'm thinking, oh, you're going to kill him now. He's going to be the heroic sacrifice and we never see them again. But they're like, no, we're going to fucking get you home, John C. Riley. He goes, you guys are my best friends. <laughs> and then they're like, they retire for the evening. And John C. Riley is shaving himself. He's like, I don't know if I'm ready to see what's underneath this beard at this point. I might be scared. And like Detroit's going, we're going to be scared of you no matter what, John C. Riley goes. Fair point, fair point. And John Ortiz is like, listen, I'm, I'm just kind of freaked out about this whole situation. And John Joshua is like, listen, if you keep talking, I'm just going to stab you with this in your sleep. Like, I'm going to do it. And the guy goes, are you serious? He goes, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I loved it. He, so he goes from just like laughing manically to like so fucking dead serious. <laughs> and then we get another body moment between the two pretty people in the movie chat, Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson. It's like, can you two just fuck already? <laughs> And, you know, uh, Tom Hiddleston's uh, it's like, oh, because that the thing. Like, she wants to take some pictures at night, but she needs, like, a flash. He's like, here, take my lighter. And she goes, oh, wow, this is, like, from World War II. He goes, yeah, it was the only thing that my dad my dad uh, gave to me when I was a little kid. Because remember, Chad, it's not that long after. Like, he's probably in his 30s, mid-30s at this point. So, yeah, that's my, that's what my dad gave me when he, when he went off to fucking war, fought the Nazis, landed in Hamburg, and, and never found him. Never found him. He goes, oh, shit. You want to fuck? And it's like, yeah! And so finally, Tom Hiddleston, Real Arson, they bump uglies as they should, Chad. They're pretty people. They don't have sex. But it's like, come on, just do it already. Just smooch. And they're like touching each other. Like, they're all getting closer. They're touching each other and hugging and arm rubbing and stuff. It's like, you're, you're, getting, you're getting closer. Naya Brown, they fuck hard. Not yet, but they're, they're on the cusp. They're, they're in the process of wooing. There's wooing going on. Uh, meanwhile, speaking of wooing, chat, uh, <laughs> John Goodman is talking to Samuel Jackson. He's like, Samuel, listen, man. I think what we're doing right now is is folly. You know, we I mean we're we're, we're gonna because we're, what they want to do, what Samuel Jackson wants to do is we're gonna get all my men, we're gonna get those munitions, we're gonna king kill King Kong. And Jacob's like, listen, we should get these guys, but then we should fucking make for the LZ. And Samuel Jackson's like, if there's another fucking word out of your mouth, motherfucker, I will bury you right where you sit. He goes, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> and he walks away. Um Eventually, chat, we cut back to uh, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, their whole group. They're, they, they're down by the boat, chat. They finally got the boat working. Boom! It's, it looks like it's going to fall apart, chat, but it did it. It did it, and they can get on their on their way. But then the entire uh, community, chat, the entire village of hundreds, looks like hundreds of people, possibly even thousands, they all line up there because they're sad because John C. Riley's going to leave, chat. He's been with them for, he's been there, he's part of their family. And I love their green because the only thing they do is they look at you and they go, like that. It's very subtle. That's like their sign of affection. And John C. Riley, he's standing up there with them, and he goes, I'm going to miss all of you. Thank you for what you've done. He also says goodbye. I love this scene. He says goodbye to his, uh, so the, the Japanese soldier chat, the Japanese airman who tried to kill him. They moved. They became best friends. They wanted to survive. And listen, you don't give a shit what country you represent, what side of the war you're, you're, you're on. If you lived this person for 28 years, you just want to live. You're fighting off giant monsters. Like, you just don't care. It's like, yeah, eventually you just become friends. You're like, we got to do this together. And he goes to this, his friend's grave and says goodbye. He's like, I always said that I, I want to bring you home to your family. And he says some words in Japanese. I, I can't repeat them. 
you know, Mr. Arigato. <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Roboto. Arigato, Mr. Arigato, Mr. Roboto. And he leaves. He leaves, Chad. <laughs> He gets up. He's like, I think that's what he said. Uh, Devil's hand. Think of the big booty butt. Welcome. Thick booty butts. Hope you're doing very well. And so then he's at the village right right from the boat. The boat is leaving. And he's like, thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for keeping me and my, keep, keep uh, uh, my friend uh, safe. Keep my friend safe. Make, make sure he's remembered. And they all bow. And he goes, hey, look me up in Chicago if you're ever there. <laughs> Which she, they're like, fuck you. You're never, we're never going to get to Chicago. We're stuck here forever. And the boat goes off. The boat goes off, Chet. Eventually, you know, they're, they're going down, uh, and they do get in radio contact with Samuel Jackson and uh, his people. It's like, oh, fantastic, B perfect. And like, okay, well, you just fucking set up a flare, Samuel L. Jackson. And he does just that. Boom. And like, we see your flare. Yay, we did it. And John Ortiz is like, we're going to do it, guys. We're going to fucking make it. Oh, my God. And these giant, these, these like, little, they're, honestly, they're little, chap. These little pterodactyls come down. Like, they're about, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the size of my head, but there's a shit ton of them, chap. You know, maybe, like, maybe just two, twice the size of my head. And they fucking fly down. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Chu Bayus. Chu Bayus, think of the volume. I actually saw these in another scene where Samuel Jackson and his... By the way, there's a scene where they're walking through this, like, chest-high water. Samuel Jackson and his boys are like, I am not walking through that fucking chest-high water. Absolutely not. There is fish. There's giant kaiju fish and worms and hentai down there. No. And they're just walking down it. <laughs> they're just fucking doing this. So I'm like, uh-uh. And then they come up to this tree. It looks like it has all these leaves that are moving around, like, in a breeze. Sam Jackson, those aren't leaves. And he looks through this rifle that Sam Beverly has, and he's these giant, not giant, but they're like these small pterodactyls, literally with a, uh, like a chainsaw, I don't know how to describe it, yet, but like a bladed beak. It has all these serrated edges down its beak, Chad. And he's like, these little sharp teeth. It's like, holy fuck. And he shoots it, and it, and it has blue blood, and explodes. And all these fucking pterodactyls go, gah, gah, gah. they all fly away. Well, now we're back on the boat, and John Ortiz is like, we made it, guys, we made it, ah! And these little, one of these, ter like, two pterodactyls come down, they lift him up, Chap, and there he's like, no, no, no! And we watch as he's slowly ripped apart in midair. It's a fucked up death, where they stretch him out, literally. Thank you, Jay Jr., uh, 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 Bezo, 12 of the fall, you're my new huckleberry. But we see this scene where they just rip him apart in midair, chat. Where they're pulling on him every which way. His fucking arm gets ripped off. His fucking foot gets ripped. He's like, ah! And he's still alive. As they're, This is a hell of a death. Where they're ripping you apart and they're eating you and eating his tummy in midair. Like pulling out his intestines as he's still screaming. And they're like... And they're like, we can't, we can't even get a beat up. We can't even shoot him. We can't put him out of his misery. And like, he's gone. Tom Hilton says he's gone. And even fucking John Cirello was like, oh, yeah, those things are fucked up. It's like, it's, it's a real, like I told you, yeah. You know, it's not just giant monsters stepping on you. You, you, get, you will get impaled by something. And it will go through your, your mouth out your asshole. You will be ripped apart and have your innards eaten alive. <laughs> Itty bitty pterodactyl titties. Oh, my God. Devil's hand. Thank you for the 2,000 bitty donation. Wow, woo, wee, woo. Oh, my God. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Ah, who got ripped in half? Oh, John Ortiz. <laughs> yeah, he got ripped in half. Well he, well, he was still alive when he was being eaten in midair. It was erotic. And I was like, that's hot. <laughs> Thank you, Devil's Hand, with the 2,000. 2,000 biddies for itty bitty pterodactyls. And so eventually they parked the boat and they meet up with Samuel L. Jackson. It was like, woo, yay, everyone's hugging and shit. And Samuel Jackson is like, listen, uh, we still got to, because they don't know Toby Kebbell's, uh, Toby Kebbell's dead, but they don't know. We still got a man uh, out there. We got to go get him. We got to get those munitions, too, to make sure we can protect ourselves. And Tom Middleton's like, uh, also, uh, John C. Riley's like there. And he's, uh, Samuel Jackson's like, motherfucker, how long have you been here for? He's like, I've been here for 28 years. Uh, Lieutenant, he's like, yeah, stand two soldiers. And they fucking salute each other and everything. I was like, man, happy to see that you've been here. Samuel Jackson's like, listen, uh, Toby Kebbell, apparently uh, his position, he's just west of here. If we go there, we can pick him up. We can, we can get the munitions. We can get going. Tom Middleton's like, and uh, Jason, Josh Riley's like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Your friend is west? We don't go west, okay? East, in, in my book, east is best. West is worst. West is where the fucking scroll cra uh, skull crawlers are right now. We don't go in there. That's their domain. We don't go there. He's like, I don't give a fuck what skull crawlers are. We got to go pick up my man. And even Tom Middleton's like, listen. We gotta 
we got to go, all right? I feel sorry for your, your man. Like, at this point, you're like, ah, we got most of the people, but we got to get the fuck out of here, all right? It's like, if he's saying he's been on, the, on this island for quite a while, I think we should do that. And John Sir, uh, or Samuel Jackson is like, nah, motherfucker, we are going to go s- save our man. Like, we hired you. You were hired. This is a job, okay? You want that goddamn bonus? You're going to do what you're told. And Brie Larson's like, I think we should leave. And he's like, woman, no. Uh, and th- 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 Tom Hills is like, fuck, fine. Okay, we'll get the guy. We'll get the guy. And they all head out. And John C. Riley, he goes up to all the soldiers. He's like, oh, you seem like a good uh, good group of guys. You seem like a good group of guys uh, to die with. You shouldn't have come here. We're all going to fucking die together. <laughs> and they're like, oh, man, you're scary. <laughs> Look at a good group of guys to die together with. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and so eventually they all get like, they also, uh, I think they say, uh, oh, no, they all, they all go together. We're going to leave the boat here. We're going to go for Toby Cobble because he's, he's west. So the boat's not going to, there's no water that way. And so they head out. And eventually, chat, they, they come up to this precipice and they look over and they see these, this, this, it's like the elephant graveyard from the Lion King, chat. Do not go there, Simba. The light does not shine there, all right? We never go there. And we see these two massive fucking uh, uh, con skeletons, chat. These are Khan's parents. And they're like, holy shit. And John Zerrell is like, we can, and Samuel Jackson's like, okay, it's just right. By the way, it's all covered in fart gas. Because these things, all they do is eat all day, and they regurgitate and fart. And it's just like methane gas everywhere. It's like, I don't want to go down there in the stinky uh, death pit. No fucking thank you. And Samuel Jackson goes, well, this looks safe. Let's go straight through. And John Zerrell is like, yeah, listen, um, this is very dangerous. We should probably just go around. And he's like, we can make better time. We just go through. And John Zerrell is like, yeah, what do I know? I've only been here for 28 fucking years. And they just go down in the fart pit <laughs> it's like oh great and yeah you see uh john Gum, he's taking all these pictures with this very loud camera you know like a big flash and everything and then we have uh cole he's smoking a cigarette so ooh, it's, it's fucking easy he's like man don't fucking smoke that here we don't, we're not on break let's get rid of that when he flicks the cigarette chat if we even get a slow motion cigarette flick and you know what someone's gonna explode and it goes in one of the, the one of the uh butthole uh holes chat in the earth, it goes ba boom and explodes because it's all fart gas, it's methane gas. And John Goodman's like, watch out for the gas holes, idiots. Continues taking pictures and shit. And they continue walking and everything. But then eventually, chat, they hear the. And they're like, Justin Rose, like, we gotta, f- oh shit, we gotta take cover now. Take cover now. And they all take cover, chat, behind all these bones. We see a triceratops skull. We see con skulls. We see all sorts of things, all the skull, skull, skull crawler skulls. And they're all hiding behind the bones, chat. And we see this massive fucking skull crawler just starts coming out. He's just looking around. You get, ah. And it, it, it ends up near uh, Brie Larson and uh, Tom Hiddleston, chat, and a couple of the other characters. And it starts going, <coughs> And it, so what they do is, chat like they they have this very strong stomach acid that melts their prey, but they can't process the bones. So what they do is like a snake. So it regurgitates the, the skeleton uh, of, of its prey chain and vomits up Toby Kebbell. <laughs> we see Toby Ke- Kebbell's like, there's still some flesh and sinew on his skull and bones. He's like, ah! And they see the dog tags uh, wrapped around the skull. And Tom Hiddleston goes, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it, it, but it walks off after it just fucking vomits everywhere. Chat, it's like, oh, the smell must be awful. And it goes away. And, it'll, and at this point, I'm like, okay, well, that was horrifying. We got, we got to get going. We got to get going. So they all group up together. And you know, John Goodman again. John Goodman is, for whatever reason, he's walking really slow. All of a sudden, he's last in line. What I tell you, chat. Never be last in line on Skull Island. You don't want not in this movie because he takes the pictures and then start the camera starts going pachoo, 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 like it's malfunctioning and you hear the <sighs> and John Goodman goes, "Oh God, no!" And it eats John Goodman. It bores him. <laughs> it bores him. This thing. I'm like, "Oh, not John Goodman." And Point Dexter's like, "No, John Goodman, my best friend." Like they had a nice little bond. They were hugging each other earlier, Jack, because that's just like his son. That's the only guy that ever believed him was John Goodman, and they're hugging and shit, and he, John Goodman gets bored by this, it's like, holy fucking shit, and by the way, yeah, I think it swallowed him alive, Chad, so he's just being melted, John Goodman's being melted by stomach acid, it's bad, but it's so cool, because the camera is still malfunctioning, so in the, in the belly of the of the monster, it's like very translucent, so you hear the pachoo, pachoo, the flash is, it keeps going off, and so they're tracking it through all the fart mist, it's like, holy shit, oh, Pink, uh, Pack, uh, uh, Tijuana? Pink! I'm gonna call you Pink for short. You're my new Huckleberry. You're my new follower. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're enjoying the review so far. Currently reviewing Khan 
Colin Skull Island. And so they're trying to like, oh, fuck, we got some positions right here. Marine, you take the fucking giant smark of mailings you set on top of that Triceratops skull. And they're tracking these things, Chet. And eventually this thing just bursts through and it starts, you know, going right at the machine gun. guy goes, ah! and it goes right through. It just hits the guy. He's like, oh, and then he, he's caught in midair. This is amazing. So the one, there's, there's like two skull crawlers. And this one fucking skull crawler get, get, like a, it's like a, a frog ton shoots out and he swallows, he vores the guy alive, Chad, and eats him. It's like, oh my God. It's like, you're still alive when you're inside of it. It's like, no, I'd rather you just kill me instantly and be, you know, I would never want to be eaten by a, like an animal. I was like, fuck that. No, but to be eaten and still alive by the animal inside of its gullet. Oh my God. Nightmare. And so they're like, we got to take these fucking things out. And Samuel Jackson's like, bring in the fucking flamethrower. They bring in this flamethrower guy, chat. And he's like, you're a red shirt. But he starts, ah! he starts flamethrowing. Like the one that ate John Goodman starts burning it alive and everything. It starts, he's like, ah, it's like burning and shit. But eventually it fucking hits the flamethrower guy with its tail, but it kind of dies. And he explodes against a, a con skull, chat, setting off all the methane gas. And oh, kills a whole bunch of the other Marines who are just red shirts there to die. And this, also, John C. Riley just is a badass chat because he's just standing there with his samurai sword and he starts speaking all this Japanese chat. Arigato, Mr. Roboto. And, ah, and the skull color goes right for him. He goes, ah, and he slices it, chat. He slices its belly. It's like, ah. And all the things are falling out. Jugman's like, I'm still alive. <laughs> I'm still alive. Oh, my God. My body's gone. <laughs> and he dies. Um. But it's cool. But eventually, Chad, uh, they're like, okay, shit, because now what, what's happening, the pterodactyls from earlier show up. Chad, the, little, <laughs> the little pterodactyls start showing up. And, ooh, and also the one guy, that one of the guys that exploded, uh, he had the, for whatever reason, they have toxic gas canisters, and these things fucking go off. And Brie Larson is almost being eaten by one of the skulls. She runs away. She's hiding one of the rib cages of, of, of Khan's, uh, either his mom or dad, his parents. And this she's trying to get at her, Chad. And Tom Hilson's like, hero time. John C. Riley, give me the fucking samurai sword. Let's slow down the scene. And we get the slow motion scene, Chaz. We have these mix of colors. Like the toxic gas is this very dark blue. Then you have the green fart gas, chat. And he's slicing and dicing all these uh, pterodactyls, Chaz. He's going for it. It's super over the top. It's super stupid, but I really like it, Chaz. It's, it's a very beautiful thing to look at. He's just slicing and dicing. And eventually he gets over there. And they, you know, they they fire at the uh, skull crawler chat. They explode it, and he saves Brie Larson. And at this point, they're like, "What the fuck? Like, we got to get out of here!" And then they get out to a clearing. They get out to a clearing at this point, and they're like, "Oh fucking Jesus! Oh my!" Simple Jackson's like, "Well, that happened. Let's keep going." And it's, it, it, we got to go find Toby Kebbell. And Tom says, "Like, we just lost like half our group right now." Okay, we're not going to do this, okay? Here's Toby Kebble. I found his, his ID tags wrapped in a human skull that was pre-digested. He was vomited up. He's dead. And they're like, oh, not Toby Kebble. And Samuel Jackson's like, oh. Well, we're still going to go for those munitions. And everyone's like, why are we going for the munitions? Why do you want them? He's because we're going to fucking kill King Khan. And they're like, why? And he's like, because... He's my war now. <laughs> it's like, and, Sam, and John Cena's had enough of it. He's like, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. And he tries to fucking uh, uh, kill Samuel Jackson. Samuel Jackson, I didn't have any backhands, uh, uh, John C. Riley. And he's like, listen, if you're not with me, then you're my motherfucking enemy, all right? If you want to leave, you go ahead and get going, all right? He's like, and Samuel's like, listen, we're going to be with the boat. We're going to wait for you at this point. We'll wait. But if you're not back in time, we got to go. We got to wait till dawn. He's like, you do what you need to do, Tom Hiddleston. You're not getting your money, motherfucker. Khan's going down. Charlie not going to get me. I'm going to get Charlie. Because that's what it is, Chad. He exchanged the Via Khan for King Khan. <laughs> and then the rest of the soldiers are like, I'm, I'm uncomfortable about this. But eventually they split up. They split, the group split up. Uh, Tom Hiddleston, Brie Larson, uh, Poindexter, and um, uh, uh, Lynn, they go back to the boat. And John Cirello, of course, they go back to the boat. Uh, while uh, Samuel Jackson, his guys, they go for the munitions. They they come up they come upon the tree where Toby Kebbell left like his note to his son and all this stuff. And they were dear Billy, and then, then fucking Easy e starts talking, dear Billy. Your, your father was the greatest soldier who ever done it. It's like, I get eaten? <laughs> he was the most famous soldier that ever got eaten by a giant lizard? Arguably, sure. <laughs> I guess I would agree. 
Token Stroke Daddy. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to stream. You're my new Huckleberry. Hope you're doing very well tonight. And Samuel Jackson's like, that's great. Let's set up a trap for Khan. And so they set up this massive fucking trap for Khan, chat, where they take all this napalm, they start dumping it into this lake. They say, I don't know, they set all like an enclosure. So, okay, if this thing goes off, all these fires will go off. We'll have these improvised, these IEDs set around here. We'll set them off to get him and we'll fucking take him down. That's the other thing, too. Uh, oh, yeah, they, they take him down. And that's what they want to do. Uh, meanwhile, Brie Larson and Tom Nelson, their group goes uh, back to the boat. They're waiting. But, you know, they're like, oh, fuck, wait a minute. Because Tom, Tom Hiddleston, he senses something. This is like weird part of the movie. He's like, I sense something. I'm going to go over this ridge. You guys stay here. And Brie Larson, well, I'm going to go with you. I'm pretty too. And he's like, all right. And they go together. And we get a great, this feels improvised by John C. Riley. But he's like, okay, well, everyone fucking make sure, uh, you know, to watch what's ahead of you and behind you and watch what's above you too. Be sure to do that. All right. And then, and then you know, because uh, Poindexter's like, w w why? And he goes, ants. Ants, that's why. He goes, oh, he's like, they're in the trees, and they'll drag you up there. And it's like, but they kind of sound like birds. And you hear this cuckoo, ch ch cuckoo, cuckoo, And they're like, see that, that thing? It sound like a bird? That's a motherfucker. That, he see, he was, he, there's one fuck, uh, fuck used in this movie, and he says, see, that sounds like a bird. Nah, that's a fucking ant. <laughs> it's like, okay. Eventually, we cut up to this uh, precipice. Like, it went from, like, you know, daytime to night. So, apparently, Tom Middleton and Brie Larson have been doing a lot of climbing. They get up this giant precipice, and they're overlooking it. And it's very beautiful in the scenes. And they start seeing, like, all the flora and fauna coexisting as one. And then they see how the mist chat. Something's coming towards them. They go, oh, shit. And who can you see his eyes uh, first, chat? You see his eyes. And Khan just walks right up there. And he's a little more confident. And he looks at, you know, Tom Hiddleston. And he goes, mm -hmm. You're fine. And Brie Larson's like, oh, girl. <laughs> and he's like, oh, um, well, okay. And Brie Larson's like, oh, my God. She's like, just, just captured like, by his majesty, his be the, the beauty of this thing. Thank you, Crazy Brownie. We got Naya Brownie and Crazy Brownie. Resubscribing five months using that prime description. Thank you so much. Thank you. Love the smell of napalm in the morning. Con don't. Con don't love that. Thank you, Crazy Brownie. But we see Khan, he starts to, like, Brie Larson, like, you know, puts her hand down. Khan, like, gets a little closer, and he touches, he, she touches his, like, his, his lip and nose. And he's like, oh. And you see his, his features start to soften. He's not as aggressive looking. He's a little more relaxed and calmer. And it's like, this is very much, you know, the, I mean, Brie Larson plays, like, a new iteration of the Fay Ray character from the original King Khan, the damsel. But he's not a damsel in distress. But he's like, oh, but it shows you that he can have a connection with humans, which is a setup for the, 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 the sequel, which we see has this connection with this very young girl, this little girl. And so he initially has maybe this one with, with, with Brie Larson's character. And she's like, huh, huh. And she's amazed by it. And he's like, he's like yeah, yeah, blonde lady, nice to con, con happy. And then she, ba boom, we see some explosions. Now the con's like, the fuck, Mo moment ruined. I'll be right back. And then, Chad, we cut to, and they're like, uh-oh, it's fucking Samuel Jackson. And at this point, he's like, we got to stop him because they, they, they go back to John C. Riley, and they're like, listen, we got to, uh, we have to stop. Because, uh, yeah, because they go to John C. Riley, and John C. Riley, like, meets in the middle, and it's like, what, 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 what the fuck are we going to do? What, what's going on? Also, Point Dexter and, and Lynn are there because they're like, we, there's fucking ants in the trees, man. And they're like, we got to stop Samuel Jackson from killing Khan. He protects this island, and the last thing we need is for the inhabitants to die. We, we, we have to stop him. So I like that we, now the, the objective is to save Khan. He's a good guy. He's a good kaiju. And Justin was like, hell yeah. And they fucking do, the, uh, do that fist from Predator chat that Carl Weathers, Arnold Schwarzenegger does. Like, yes. And they go towards uh, the explosions. Meanwhile, Samuel Jackson is literally just has these two fucking torches. He's just like, yeah, motherfucker, come on. And Khan's like, hey, stop it. <laughs> he's gone to see Samuel Jackson, these explosions going off. And Khan's like, I've had enough of you. And Khan just goes, ah. He just runs at Samuel. And Samuel Jackson's just like, Ooh, this motherfucker. And he throws the torch right when Khan's like halfway in the lake. He throws the torches in there. And ba boom, because they've dumped all the gasoline, all the napalm in the lake chat, it goes up. And then Khan's like, oh shit, oh shit. He's like, he starts to be engulfed by hellfire chat. And he's like, ah, his beautiful shots and everything. And Khan's like freaking out. And he's like, ah. And eventually, though, he's like, fuck it, you know, um, Cause he starts stomping around everything, and he takes out some of the soldiers. Chat, remember Steve? Steve's like, oh god, steps on Steve. Chat, Steve's gets Scott. Don't be sexist and an asshole, Steve, or you get smushed by King Khan. So Steve's gone. Chat. Um, eventually Khan's like, oh, fuck. 
Oh, I'm sleepy. Because he got all the smoke inhalation. It's really the smoke inhalation chap that did it to him. He's just been probably overheated, too. And he just falls down on the ground, like, right next to Samuel Jackson. And he's like, yeah! Yeah, fucking United States! Woo, we did it! We conquer and, and culturally appropriate things! Set the charge. We're going to blow this guy up. And the Marines are like, oh, okay. But then Tom Hiddleston comes in there, John C. Ryland, Brie Larson, and they're like, fuck, man, so you've got to stop this, okay? If you do this, some, something really bad is going to happen. John C. Ryland's explain, like, listen, if you kill him, then the, the king Skullcrawl will come up, and he's, he, he's very dangerous. He has those morality. He just wants to eat. And Samuel Jackson goes, <laughs> we'll kill that motherfucker too. <laughs> And Brie Lawrence is like, you got to stop with this whole bravado thing, what you're doing. You, 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 you've lost the plot, Samuel Jackson. He's like, he, I love this line. He says, bitch, please. <laughs> but, you know, at, at this point, everyone has their guns on him uh, or on Tom Hiddleston and John C. Riley. But then the soldiers are like, all right, fuck this. Fuck this. And they all turn their guns in Samuel Jackson, you know, Detroit and Easy e and Cole. They're like, sir, stand down. It's like, you motherfuckers just can't get the job done. You just can't beat Charlie. I can beat Charlie. And all of a sudden, they hear this thing bubbling up from the ground. Like in the water, she had this blah, blah, like a whirlpool. It's like an explosion in the air. It's like, that's not good. Bilbo, Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins, only three feet tall. Thank you with 100 base, Bilbo. Appreciate that, Bilbo. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. King Kong ain't got shit on him. We're about to. <laughs> He's about to. <laughs> He's not even acting. This is how he is. I love it, though. I love it. Because they start seeing this thing come up from this whirlpool, just psh, 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 all this water shooting up in the air. I'm like, all right, fuck that. We're taking off. Everyone starts taking off. We got to get back to the boat, like, right now. We got to get moving. Uh... Uh, but but then Samuel Jackson, he's just, Tom Hill's just like, Sam, we got to get going. Sam's just like, he's looking in the middle distance. He's just staring into nothing. He's staring at everything, nothing at the same time. Uh, and Tom Hill's like, all right, fuck it. He runs away. And then Shadow pops out of the of the whirlpool, the giant thing. We're underneath the, it's the, underneath the, the hollow earth. The king of the skull crawler shed. And he's like three times as big as the other one. He's like, holy shit. And then Samuel Jackson's like, oh, shit. And then Khan's like, Hey, I don't like you. <laughs> Samuel Jackson's like, you don't got shit on me, Con. Mo and he even says, I'm going to kill you, you motherfucker. And he's right about to say his motherfucker. Con goes, nope. And, and smushes Samuel Jackson <laughs> right where he's about to do that. Meanwhile, the skull crawler just like starts attacking Con. Like, fuck, starts fucking him up, Chad. Because Con's like wounded. He has smoke inhalation, Chad. The explosions, the fire. It's rough for him. But the scroll crawler sees he sees those little squishy humans. He's like, what the hell's that? I want to eat you. And he he just goes, he's done with con. He's like, oh, fuck, I want to eat those. Those, those. those look delicious. I love human meat. And then we cut chat. It's like it's dawn at this point. And we cut to um, Poindexter and Lynn. And we're like, well, they told us to go to the fucking LZ at dawn. But then Lynn and Poindexter are like, god damn, we got to save them. So they get in the boat and they head out towards where they think they are. In the general direction, where they hear the yelling and the screaming and the explosions, and then we cut. They're in this like um, a valley chat with all these like very low bodies of water. It's like a ship, like a, like a think of like a shipyard that has every ship from every century. Chat. You see things that you see like a Nazi submarine. You see these uh, ships from like the 17th century, the 18th century, like these wooden ships, pirate ships. It's like wow. Like there's all so much stories and history on this island. Like all these people that came here got lost here and probably died here. It's really, really cool. Maybe even the natives. That's how the natives originally were until they eventually. Because you, you see some of the natives, like, they're, they look like they're different, different ethnicities. And it's like, you're, there's not, like, one consistent ethnicity with the natives. I think it's because you just, you just fucking live here after a while. And maybe they're just, you know, they're having families with each other. Like, they all look different. I was like, that's kind of cool. I wonder if that's what they did. But at this point, they're running in the shallow water. But Cole, he's just been, you know what, guys? This movie needs a self-sacrifice scene. And he's, he's like, no, Cole, no. Don't fucking do it, man. Don't do it. Cole's like, yeah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> and it's just like you, you would always expect. Like, you should probably just keep running. <laughs> you would make it. And he has, like, all the munitions, all these grenades and stuff. And he, like, unpins these two grenades. And he's like, come on! Come on, do it! And the skull crawl is like, nah. And it fucking just whips around and hits him with his tail. And he just flies all the way to this, like, mountain and goes, 
boom, he just explodes completely. I love just how anticlimactic his death is. It's like, wow, you fucked up. It's so funny. This explodes and I was like, well, that was ineffective. And they just continue to run away. Deadpool, Cole literally carrying a grenade launcher. You couldn't fight. You could have just fired at it. He's like, nope. Nope. Nah, man. Fucking take me. I'm done with that. <laughs> and the Skullcrow was smart. Skullcrow was smart. It's like, nah, I'm not eating you. There's something about you I don't like. And he was right. Skullcrow was very smart. Um, I didn't get this big just because, you know, I like to eat. I got a big old brain in here. He whips him. And Skullcrow's like, I'm going to eat the rest of you. And he just starts fucking going. So he starts going at him. But then who fucking comes out, Jack Khan? He's like, I want to help the blonde lady. And he and we get a, a wonderful choreographed monster kaiju battle, Chat in the middle of this ancient shipyard. With the skull crawl and Khan are going at it. Skull crawl, like he has like, he only, he only has like uh, two front hands, legs, that's it. Uh, and the rest of his body's like a snake. But he uses his very thick tail to wrap around Khan to crush him, <gasps> trying to, like, suffocate him, Chad. But Khan's like, fuck, and he's trying to get off the mouth, and the mouth's always shooting out, like, that tongue wrapping around his hand and stuff. And they're going at it. And we get, like, at one point, the Skull Crow, like, pushes Khan into these giant ships where he's wrapped in chains, which is a little homage to, the, you know, when King Khan's brought back from Skull Island to New York, and they have him in the chains. You see that kind of little homage here. I like how John, uh, Jordan Fort Roberts, he, he manages to reference a lot of, Khan movies within this movie is one. There's like a little, little, you know, wink and a nod. I like that. And Khan's stuck. Khan's stuck at this point. And he's like, he can't get out because the chains are holding him in place. Yeah, he can't get his arms. And Skull Crow is just about to, like, just rip his throat out there because he's always going through his throat because he wants to rip it out. But then, Chad, the thing starts getting shot at. And you see that the boat with Poindexter and Lynn, they are shooting at him, Chad. And they're like, ah, with the, with the repurposed, uh, uh, zero and American uh, um, uh, turrets from the from the planes starts shooting at him. Skull Crow's like, "Fuck! I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and eat you, but I'm gonna eat them first. And he starts going at him. Chad starts running at him at this point. I was like, "Oh!" And John C. Riley, a lot of the people get back on the boat. Oh, they survive. The ones who are uh, survive. Meanwhile, um, uh, oh yeah, Brie Larson. She also signaled. She signaled for the boat, and that's how they got in contact with them. And so, meanwhile, Tom Hiddleston's like, "Ah, shit! I gotta get them off the boat so they can get away. They can start the engine back up in the turret guns. So they can shoot at it." And so he's using himself as a fucking distraction. Chad, the scroll, the scroll crawl is chasing him. Meanwhile, Brie Larson's a fucking eagle eye. Chad, she's Hawkeye and a half, and she managed to use a flare and boom! And she fit. She fires the flare, hits the scroll crawl in the eyes. Like the fucking. Ah! And his eyeball explodes. He's like, what the hell? And he's like, ah! And then Khan, he gets, he gets, oh, this is so cool, yeah. Because Khan, he gets out of the chains, but he uh, on the chain is a giant ship propeller. So he's got like a flail with the ship propeller at the end. Um, you know, like the, the rotor. Here's the rotor. And he just launched right before it's, it's about to eat Tom Hiddleston. He launches it at the skull crow and embeds it in his back and he pulls it like, oh, and he starts like cutting this thing apart with the, with the ship rotor channel, like, doing all this. Cause he's smart. He can use weapons and things. And skull crow is like, what the hell? And eventually Khan just like takes it and he like cuts him like vertically, like slits its throat, but not like horizontally chat, like vertically, like, oh, like all that. And it falls down the water. Uh, oh, but we'll be, oh, but he does that. But no, but what he does, he, it falls. It, 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 he uh, he does that, and he slams it against the mountainside that Brie Larson is on. She goes, ah, and she falls off. He's like, oh shit, no. He's like, no, I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. When the skull crawl is like, you didn't kill me yet, and it starts biting like at his neck and his, his shoulder and stuff. And Khan's trying to shake him off. And that's when he throws him in the water. That's when he cuts him. That's when he throws him in the water. Uh, then we see Brie Larson. Tommy Nelson's like, no, Brie Larson. It was like, oh. And we see him in the water. She's like, oh. And all that. She got the shit knocked out of her. He's like, who's going to save her, Chad? It's going to be Tommy Nelson. Nah, Chad. Because Khan, he reaches up into the water. He gets her and he goes, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, you're really pretty. I didn't mean to do it. She's like, oh. <laughs> she's like completely out of it, Chad. And then, oh no, the skull crow comes. And we get a really cool scene. The skull crow is like, he's like, oh shit. And what's great, because the skull crow is like, I want that blonde bitch. And he's always trying to go at Khan's hand, but Khan's hand is ever so gentle while he's like, he's holding Brie Larson so gently, Chad, in his one hand, while he's fighting off the scroll, skull crow with the other, just like smashing him, but like holding Brie Larson out of, the, out of reach because he doesn't want her to get got. And eventually, Chad, the skull crow, he gets around Khan and he literally. Eats, he vores Khan's hand until Khan's like, oh no! His hand, like his entire arm is down. 
the skull crawler's throat and he's like oh you fucked up because what he does Shay uses his fucking thumb and he just rips out its tongue and all all of its innards just goes and just rips it out and the thing's like and it just dies it dies right there the king of the skull crawlers and Khan's like, ooh, and but Brie Larson is perfectly preserved. She's doing okay. He's like, oh, and he goes over to the the water bank chat where he sees the people. He's like, oh, and he just kind of goes, um, he puts her on the, the ground. And goes, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, bye, and he just walks away. <laughs> He walks away. Hey, he's not lusting after it, Shay. He's like, this is, this is a very good uh, King Kong. He, he, uh, he's very respectful of the ladies. I appreciate that. And he just walks away, Chet. And meanwhile, Tom Hiddleston, he goes there, and he fucking is. He also is like, <gasps> you know, she comes to. And they just watch Khan just, you know, just go off. And Brie Larson's crying. I would cry. I'd be like, oh, God. Oh, I would cry the whole time. She cries as she watches him, her savior. Walker even looks back and goes, you don't want to talk to me, girl. You know where I am. <laughs> he walks away. They all get on the fucking boat. Everyone's bonding. And eventually, Chad, they get to the LZ or the helicopters are coming in. But then Khan's like, I just want to make sure. Oh, helicopters. Ooh, I hate those. He's like, oh, I hate them. And he sees them. She's in the reflection of his eyes, Chad. It's like, oh, God. Oh, no. Just the rage, Chad. The king of the islands. Like, ooh, don't piss him off. Make sure those helicopters don't get near him, Chad. But then we cut. We cut, oh, the movie's over. It's like, no. And we get this, like, 70s era footage, and we see John C. Riley. This is great. This is such a great way to end the movie. Like, there's a stinger. We'll talk about the stinger in a second. But I really love it where we cut to the, almost, like, the archival footage of him stepping out of the taxi. Uh, he's shaving. He's wearing his uh, dress uniform, chat of his rank. He knocks on the door, opens up, and he sees his adult son looking at him. And he's just like, I, you know, what, what can you say? And then the mom passes by the door, and she sees John C. Riley. She says, oh. She drops all the drinks, what she was carrying. He steps inside, and the the, you know, the mother, his wife, is just, oh, she's like hugging him and everything, just hugging him and crying. And the son's just like, oh, he's just dumbfounded because, you know, his father he's only heard about, never seen, never actually been held, never actually been touched, hugged by his father. And he, like, they shake hands and everything. It's a be beautiful moment, Chad, for the character. And then we cut, Chad, we cut, and we see John C. Riley like, living in the, in, in the house. You know, yeah, he's got on that GI Bill, Chad. So he's got a lot of fucking back pay, no doubt about it. Sell his fucking story, too. And he's sitting there, Chad, watching the Cubs uh, and with, a, with a hot dog in hand and a cold beer, just living his life, Chad, just happy that he finally came home after nearly 30 fucking years. Like, that's a great ending to that character. Love that ending. Like, I would have loved it if he came back for the other movies. You know, like, she should have all been set during this time period. But then should we get up? We do get a, a stinger uh, where um, Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson, they're in an interrogation room, and they want to leak their story to the press, uh, but certain people are preventing that from happening. The government, the United States government, does not want that to happen, nor does Monarch Chat, because they, they showed all this stuff to... Um, uh, the, you know, uh, Senator Richard Jenkins, he went, holy shit, here's all the money in John Goodman's name and honor. And at this point, like, we're going to go to anyone that would pay us. We'll go to the Russians. We'll give it away for free. We don't give a shit. We, people need to know about this. And then Poindexter and Lynn come in. And they're like, you don't understand. And like, what we saw, it's just the tip of the fucking iceberg. There's other things other than con out there. Let us show you this. And we see these slides, so they see this, 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 this archival footage, and we see these cave paintings, chat. We see Mothra, we see Rodan, we see Godzilla, and we see Godzilla's arch nemesis, King Ghidorah, chat, setting up Godzilla, king of the monsters. Will these monsters battle once again? Yeah, they will. And Godzilla, king of the monsters, which I shall review, chat, this Friday, this Friday evening chat, come back, back here for that review. But this, my friends, is Con Colon Skull Island. Great movie, very entertaining. Uh, I mean, the only big criticism I have, chat, yeah, some of the characters, you know, I've got a lot of depth. But you got some really fun ones out there. I even ended up liking Tom Hiddleston and Brie Larson even more. Yeah, they're stereotypical, you know, hot people. They're just there like, just fuck already. But they had fun. You think you tell they were having fun making this movie. John C. Riley's the heart of the film. Yeah. Samuel Jackson is such a great monologuing uh, bad guy. John Goodman is the, I'm not crazy, you're crazy guy is great. It's a really fun, enjoyable movie, Chad. Bilbo, think of the five biddies. I, uh, 51 biddies, excuse me. I uh, hope they bring Judson Riley back some way through old videotapes of him losing. That's what I want. Just, it would be so fun. I wish they would do that. That would be great.
That would be so great. But yeah, chat, you know, I think back in the day I gave this movie a low full price. I really loved watching this again. This was so much fun. This is what all the MonsterVerse films should be. This is what Godzilla 2014 should be and what Godzilla King of the Monsters should have been. This is the definition of a full price film, chat. Wonderful popcorn, you know, cinema entertainment, chat. Summer blockbuster, chat. Summer blockbuster and a half. Loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Really good. Really good. Oh, thank you again, Bill of Vegas. And once again, Sam Jackson doesn't survive a movie with animals. It's true. <laughs> he does not have a good track record with that. Got eaten by that fucking fish. Got eaten by the the uh, um, uh, the giant shark at Deep Blue Sea. And this is what we're gonna uh, velo eaten by Velociraptors. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't have a good track record. Chris Sears, better than sex is just everything. And Morgan, what do you think they'll do if uh, they make more movies after Kong versus Godzilla? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Um, uh, let, me, let me put a pin in that for right now. Uh, Consco Island was great fun. I hope uh, GVK is like that. Me too. Metallic Bowler, bowler me too. I mean, I'll give it just a minute because of Brie Larson. I like, all right. I like Brie Larson. I don't, I don't think she, I think she was mis, miscast as uh, Cat Marvel, but she's a fine actress. And she was having fun in the movie. I get this, uh, man, yeah, I really enjoyed Consco Island. Uh, Deadpool, it's a pulp action adventure. Yes, adventure movie. The characters don't need too much depth. I think it's a full price. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you, you you just, they just need to have big personalities. That's going to be funny. That's all you need. You're going to be monologuing villains. That, eaten by sharks and smashed by an ape. <laughs> Hold on to your butt, Sam. Indeed. The elite. Both comp films that were gotten That's, uh, 15 years ago. I was not a big fan of Peter Jackson's film. I'm going to tweet you their own. Jumbo Gang. It was pretty good. Ms. Aver, have a crossover Pacific Rim. Uh, I guess I like her too. Uh, number three out of five sharks fins. <laughs> Hat like a shark's fin. <laughs> I'm an absolute Brie Larson the same. I do not apologize for it. The elite people hate on Brie Larson because she said she's it to hurt their egos. Get over it. Baby GDG. Cat Marvel just isn't the interesting of a character. Brie is amazing. Yeah, exactly. I just... Yeah, I don't know. I always... I don't, I don't know. I feel like Katie Sackhoff should have played the character, but, you know. That's not either near that. I'm not reviewing Cat Marvel, Chad. I'm reviewing this movie. I'm reviewing Brie Larson in this film. I liked her in the movie. She was fun. It looks like she was having a good time. And yeah, I really like this film. Uh, you know... Uh, so I forget who asked me the question. Uh, who asked me that question? Um, it was a good one. It was a good one. Um, uh, oh, this is Hamilton Burger. What do you think they'll do if they make more movies after Khan uh, versus Godzilla? I I don't know. Um, you know, I I think it would be really cool if they went the post-apocalyptic angle, like it's years, it's decades later, and the kaiju have taken over the Earth. I think that'd be fun. And so you get like a Last of Us esque, Walking Dead esque, you know, maybe like uh, that 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 Love and Monsters movie that came out last year, type of movie where humanity is like we're just surviving, and you know trying to eke out an existence while these monsters roam the planet. I think that'd be interesting. You have some that are friendly, some that aren't. I would love if they went that direction. Like, okay, we're gonna try to restructure this. You know, maybe work on the characters, maybe work on the monster stuff. I think that'd be really cool. Or, I mean, I, I would always hope that they would do other Godzilla enemies someday. I would definitely want Khan to be featured in these movies, too. I feel like, you know, Godzilla and Khan, are, whether they're going to be buddies or not, you would imagine so in the film, or at least begrudging allies. But I love it, like, like hey, they're the saviors of the planet, and they have to fight all these threats and stuff. Like, I hope we someday, like, oh, you know, in terms of the big Godzilla movies, we already got Mothra, we got King Ghidorah, Rodan. I would love to see Gendiris eventually show up. I would love to see Destroya. He's my favorite of Godzilla's enemy. I love Destroya. He's evil. He's an evil son bitch. I would love to see um, uh, a Biolante. I think that'd be really cool. Because here's the thing about it. The producers and directors have said they want to make more, apparently. It all comes down to whether or not Toe decides to let them hang onto the rights long after GDK. Ah, we'll see. I just, yeah, they really got to nail it with this one, though. That's about all I'm saying. We're just saying a Pacific Rim crossover could still happen. It'll be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. But that's what I'm hoping for, chat. I think appearing in Gamera, maybe that'd be fun. Big old turtle monster, why not? But I would love Biolante or Destroya. Those are some of my favorites. Biolante is underrated. Godzilla's Biolante is a super underrated Godzilla film. Chat, love the movie, love the movie. But chat, I'm just gonna go ahead and take a quick break. We are gonna start playing uh, some Batman Arkham Asylum, some single player shenanigans. Chat, but I'm gonna go ahead and fix myself another beverage. In the meantime, chat, it was a good review. It was a long review. Uh, entertain yourselves amongst yourselves, and I shall return. Stick around, and thank you again, chat, for your incredible generosity of the stream. Absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. Thank you. I will be right back. Stick around. Hold on to your butts.